Never mind, you can cannot hear me. Let's try again. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. If this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Oliver and I'm a master's student in economics here in um, Finland. And on this channel we talk about education and early career development, specifically here in Finland. So if you are new here, do consider subscribing. Uh, during these weekly Q&A live streams, I answer your most burning questions about studying, living and working in Finland. And how these live streams work is that um, I have a Google form linked into the description box below. And um, uh, if you want me to answer your questions live, please post your question into the Google form, again, linked in the in the description box below, because uh, then I will have all the questions here in front of my in front of me on the computer and I will not miss them um, for any reason. I will be able to answer them in a first come first serve uh, first come first serve basis. My brain is a bit slow this this evening. Um, just a second before we start the actual stream and I, I jump into the questions. Let me just link the stream into our Discord server. By the way, if you for some reason are not yet a member of our Discord server, uh, there is a link in the description box below. And um, in the server, or the, the idea of the server is to build a community of people interested in studying and working in Finland. And uh, to the server, I basically post updates about videos and upcoming live streams. And we have a bit more personal dialogue. Um, Actually, talking about that for all the existing Discord server members, I do apologize for not being able to answer uh, and uh, reply to all of your questions and messages. I've been absolutely bombarded by people uh, during the last uh, month and a half um, across all the different social platforms as well as in my email. And uh, it takes me hours to comb, comb through all the different um, questions and um, I really want to answer all the good questions in a um, uh, in, in a in a good manner and actually think about the answer. So that that's why it it, it actually takes me time. Anyhow, what is up, guys? Welcome, Dennis. Welcome back to the live stream. I'm sorry I'm a bit late today tonight. Um, I, I've had a long week, so I I wasn't able to stick to the normal schedule. Uh, Muhammad, uh, what's up? Also, also awesome to have you here as well. Astronira, what's up once again? Welcome back to the live stream. Um, guys, if you have any questions, uh, just post them into the Google form as normal, and uh, I will start directly answering some of the questions that were left from last week's live stream. And um, I think it's a good way to start this week's stream right here. Anyhow. The first question that was left over from last week came from Jorge from Portugal. And um, he has not yet decided whether or not he wants to study in Finland, but is interested in Aalto University. And the question is, if you have, an, if you have a bachelor's degree in economics from Aalto University, do you get an automatic access to the economics master's uh, master's degree program in economics at Aalto University? Do you just need to graduate bachelor's and then you have the right without specific grades and without special application? Um, is it also automatic to go from economics bachelor's? Um, is it aut also automatic to go from a bachelor's in economics to a another master's degree, for example, ISM? Or are there selection criteria there before joining the masters? Um, that's a great question, and I, and I think I actually answered this one um, in length last week. However, let's let's still go this through step by step. Excuse me. So, um, to your first question, basically, do you have a, if you have an economics bachelor's from Aldo, do you actually have direct access to to a master's program there as well? Yes, that is correct. So how this works is that in Finland, when you actually apply for a bachelor's degree on a university level or in the university level, and uh, when you get actually admitted to a university, you are automatically also admitted to do a master's degree program there as well. Um, this means that when you, for example, get admitted to do a bachelor's in economics or design or chemistry, 
in, at Aalto University, you are automatically admitted to do a master's in that same field. Um, and uh, to your second question, do you need to graduate bachelor's or, uh, and then you have a direct right to, to continue to a master's or do you need specific grades uh, or, a, uh, or an application? Uh, no, you do not need any specific grades or an uh, additional application to progress to a master's. Um, there's a couple of um, exceptions here or rules uh, and, and there is basically no s specific or extra application form. You basically just need to fill a form and tap like I, I want to do my master's in this program and you are automatically accepted. Uh, it's just a f formality and uh, it's not really an application process. Um, so yeah, you basically just need to graduate as bachelors. And actually, in many universities, the university will all uh, will allow you to start working on your master's courses even before you graduate as a uh, bachelor's from that field. For example, in my case at Aalto University, I uh, majored in accounting and business administration on my bachelor's degree in my bachelor's, and um, I changed my field to or my specialization into entre entrepreneurship and innovation management on my ma on in my masters and i basically started doing my masters courses when i was halfway to my bachelors and um, this will not be most likely happening to you because i i kind of went around the system but i basically was already almost done with my masters at the time when i graduated graduated as bachelors there's uh there was a, lo a lot of mix up there um with the courses and with the timetable so i had to basically do everything at the same time um however the point here is that you can already start doing your master's courses even before you gra graduate as bachelors that's usually how how it works in finland um if you're in university however to your third question, is it automatic to go from economics, uh, 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 from a specific bachelor's degree to another field? So, for example, from economics to, let's say, marketing or economics to finance or economics to accounting? No. Usually, if you want to change your specialization, then you need to apply or basically fill a form and, th and say that I want to change my specialization. And then there might actually exist some... Uh, Requ requirements. Um, this does not mean that you need to apply a as you apply to, to a university, no. Uh, rather, for example, if I wanted to do a master's in finance uh, without doing a ba bachelor's in finance, that would have meant that I would have needed to do a minor in finance in my bachelor's and my bachelor's GPA would have needed to be at least 3.5 or 4 out of 5. So there are going to be some prerequisites for you if you want to change your specialization in your master's. And you need to check that way beforehand because you need to basically plan on what you want to do in your master's. So I think I hope that this answered that question. Dennis, yeah, uh, saying that are you already studying in Finland? Can you add the high school option to the question? As an example, I have two years to finish my high school. Yeah, sure. I will actually, I will actually change that right away because I I forgot to do it last time. So just a moment. All right. Now, if you update the the form, you should all you should also have uh, the option to put "I'm still in high school." Uh, thanks for reminding me. I, I forgot to do this um, during the week. Anyhow, uh, the next question comes from uh, Isaac from France, uh, who has not yet decided whether or not he wants to study in Finland, but he's interested in Aalto uni University as well. And uh, the question is. Actually, we went through this already last week, but I will just answer it again because it's a good one. If you get a Finnish citizenship, if you get a Finnish citizenship by naturalization at the age of 30 to 31, so over 30, do you have to do the one-year mandatory military service that we have here? No, you don't. Do, do not. So basically, we if you become a Finnish citizenship, Finnish citizen 
when you're under 30, you will be automatically drafted into the um, into do, to do your uh, the mandatory half a year or one year military service. So again, for people who do not know, or you're not yet familiar with the Finnish uh, conscript service, is basically Finland is one of the only European countries left currently that has a, a conscription service. So basically, we all men. Um, have to do a mandatory military service when they turn 18. Usually people do them between 18 and 20, -ish, when they're t uh, 18 to 20, 21. Um, and uh, the service is from six year, six month, months to, to uh, one year, or just slightly under, under one year. And um, uh, for example, if you compare this to Israel or uh, South Korea, where they have two to four years of mandatory military service, Finnish, the, the Finnish mandatory service is way easier plus actually um, the Finnish system is is actually actually pretty nice because for example there's no hazing there's no bully, bullying that uh, that's actually against the law and um, we mostly focus on the actual practical military skills uh, so uh, it's it's actually very uh, practically oriented uh, so if you've seen for example documentaries where the the from the US where the drills drill instructors yell at the uh, uh, privates face and their faces go super red when they're just yelling and yelling and screaming that doesn't really ha that that doesn't exist in the Finnish military at all or actually it's called the Finnish defense force because we don't have a offensive military uh, Adil Yassar welcome to the stream as well awesome to have all the regulars here uh, Bik Bik Bikram also also awesome to have you here uh, Masrur welcome back to the live stream um, Guys, uh, just to let you, uh, just to reiterate, uh, if, you, if you want to, to, um, if you want me to answer any of your questions live, my brain is starting to mal malfunction. Long week. If you want me to answer your questions live, uh, please, if you could, um, prefer to post your questions into the Google form that I have linked in the description box below. The only reason for that is that uh, at times the chat gets really busy, and I will definitely miss your question if you post your question in the, into the chat. Um, when you post the, the questions into the Google form, I will see them directly in front of me here on the computer, and I will go through all of them uh, in a first come first serve uh, first come first serve basis. There. All right. Next question comes from Shannon. Again, from the US, uh, who has not yet decided whether or not she wants to study in Finland. And, uh, but she applied. And, um, oh, never mind. Actually, that we got last week. That we got as well. All right, here we got uh, a new question. So uh, the next question comes from Meirovic, who comes from uh, Lebanon, but who is living uh, currently in the United Arab Emirates and uh, is applying to study at Alt University next this next upcoming application period. And uh, the question is, from where can I buy used furniture, at least the bed for the first night? That is an excellent question. And uh, let me just pull out couple of resources for you. Mm. So basically the best one, uh, there are multiple uh, multiple places like this around Finland or, or multiple um, businesses like this around Finland uh, in, in the big cities, but basically it's called the Recycling Center or Kiertuskeskus. Um, they usually don't translate the name. Uh, basically, these guys, the only thing they do is they recycle people's, uh, for example, uh, furniture. Uh, bicycles are re really popular, for example, and you can get really high quality stuff for very cheap prices. And uh, these guys don't accept anything that is actual trash. So they only recycle really, really good and um, uh, good quality uh, furniture and, and other uh, belongings. And um, uh, usually you can get um, like a bed or a sofa for actually quite a cheap price. And you don't even have to buy it for d just the first night. You could just keep it for yourself for the entirety of your studies. Mm, the, the 
issue with this is that uh, many of these websites don't have the entire web store, for example, translated into English. But, and of course, because of COVID, you might not be able to visit the, the stores physically. However, what I what I really recommend you guys to do is basically get a get Google Translate uh, extension to your Chrome, and then uh, simply translate the entire page uh, to uh, be able to use it and, for example, buy stuff there. But yeah, Kierrätyskeskus or Recycling Center. So if you, for example, don't live in Helsinki or, or you don't move to Helsinki, just Google. Uh, you, for example, move to Vaasa or Oulu, just Google recycling center all and you should find find something Kamesh what is up welcome to the stream uh Aaron what is up welcome back to the stream the same with Ariuna also awesome to have all the regulars here um first of all guys if you just joined uh my apologies I haven't been able to answer and reply to all of your questions for example on discord or email or via linkedin i've been absolutely bombarded by questions all around the place this week and uh it's it's turned out to be completely impossible for me to get back to every, every single one of you uh second uh, apologies for my half uh half functioning brain i'm exhausted it's been a long week and i i will most likely keep this stream a bit shorter this week uh, just to be able to get back to home to sleep. Anyhow, the next question comes from Muhammad El Farouk Zohair. I think I got it. Got it right. I, I tried to learn from last week. All right. Uh, anyway, the question uh, question is. I'm sorry, um, uh, Mohamed um, comes from Morocco and ha has not yet decided whether or not he wants to study in Finland, but um, would like to study in the University of Helsinki, specifically biology and uh, neurosciences. That's really cool. And the question is, hi Oliver, I have a question last week. I'd like to know what's the criterion to be accepted at Helsinki University and how can I reduce tuition fees overall? Thanks a lot for your support. All right. Um, Good questions. Let me just pull this out for you. Uh, just a second. I need to pull out the, the correct website. All right. So um, there's two questions there. First of them was, what are the criterion of getting applied to study in Finland? That depends on the university and the degree program that you apply to. There are no general uh, application criteria or application requirements that would apply to every single university in Finland. They simply don't exist. Every single university, all, all the 14 of them, um, plus the 22 different uh, University of Applied Sciences, all of them have different requirements to, to apply. In, in addition, Finland has more than 400 different English taught degree programs and all 400 of them have different requirements to apply or to get admitted. So you always have to go to the exact uh, um, university uh, degree program website to check which what kind of requirements there are. For example, University of Helsinki uh, Neuroscience. Neuroscience master's program. And then basically from this website, you, 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 you go to instructions and re requirements at, which is uh, presented in the study info website. So study info, this, the website looks ancient, uh, basically from the stone age, but this is basically the government run, the, the uh, website that is run by the Finnish ministry of education. And uh, most of the um, university applications are actually done through this website. So this website is completely legit and all the information you, that you can find here is, is true. Uh, so Google the def specific program, go to how to apply. Sometimes it will give you a, a page inside the university website or sometimes it will guide you back to studyinfo.fi. So... Um, Let's see, application process, requirement, uh, student admission. So here you can actually see the entire admission process as well as the application uh, required attachments, um, 
uh, you can see the, the contact information for the admission services. So if, if something is unclear, and uh, let's see if we have the exact application. Yeah, for example, here you have uh, you have completed or will complete complete by August 31st, 2021, a first cycle degree, basically a bachelor's degree or a second cycle degree um, or a post postgraduate degree in Finland or abroad. You have completed or will complete application studies required to the master's program by January uh, 15th, 2021. Um, and you have sufficient proficiency in Finnish, Swedish or English. And then basically there are other application requirements requirements as well if you go deeper into the details. But every single time when you're thinking about, okay, what are what is required for me to apply to a certain program, always, 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 uh, not only Google the school, but Google also their program because every single one of them will have different requirements. Then the second question was, how do I get, can I get a discount on the tuition fees? The only way for you to get a discount for tuition fees is to get a scholarship. In Finland, scholarships are provided by the universities themselves. There are very few third-party grants or scholarships for bachelor's and master's level studies. And most uh, third-party uh, grants are for uh, doctoral uh, studies or postdocs. So the best option for you is to apply for the university tuition, uh, I'm sorry, the university uh, scholarships that each university and University of Applied Sciences in Finland has. Not all of them have, have full scholarships. Some of them have full scholarships. Um, uh, so, so again, the scholarships de depend on the uh, school itself. I have a uh, I have one video on scholarships on my on the on the channel that explains basically all of the details that you need to know about them. So go ahead and check that out. So, for example, the University of Helsinki has really good scholarships op uh, scholarship options uh, compared to to other schools in Finland. They have a fully funded grant and a full tuition fee grant. Two different things. So the fully funded grant may, means that they pay for your tuition fee and they pay you 10,000 euros in addition to the tuition fee. So that's if, for example, your tuition fee is 18,000 euros per year, they're going to pay you five, uh, depending on whether you do a bachelor's or a master's. If you do a master's, that's two years. So two times 18,000 plus 10,000 euros. So that's a lot of money. However, I would like to note that these kind of fully funded grants are extremely rare in Finland. Not only do most universities not have them at all, for example, Aalto University doesn't have this kind of the fully funded scholarships um, where they basically give you money for living costs. Rather, most schools only, um, most, is, most scholarships in Finland only cover the tuition fees and most of them not uh, don't cover the tuition fees entirely. So for example here, full tuition fee grant, um, which basically means that they cover the entire tuition fee. And what is common, th there are a couple of exceptions, is that when you get a scholarship, uh, that scholarship is going to apply to the, to the entirety of your studies as long as you're studying in a, at a normative pace. What, that, what does this mean? So a normative pace basically means that you have to, um, that uh, a bachelor's degree at a university level is three years and a master's uh, in a university is two years. So if you get a full scholarship uh, and you apply for a bachelor's at a university, again, taking into account that when you do a bachelor's, you're also admitted to do a master's. Then your scholarship will um, cover your three years of bachelor's and your two years of master's as well. So that's a lot of money. Uh, there are no other ways of getting a discount on tuition fees in Finland uh, if you are not a European Union or European Economic Area citizen. Period. All right, I hope that that uh, answered, your, answered the question. Um, Kamesh, what is up? Um, I will get back to your question in just a second, but awesome to have you here. Uh, Akbar Hossain Sujon, what is up? I hope that I, um, Sujon, Sujon, 
Sujon. I hope that I pronounced your name uh, at least close to correctly. Uh, what is up? Awesome to have you here as well. MD Sakil Khan. What What is up? Awesome to have you here as well. As well as Rars Stefan. What is up? Uh, guys, again, if you want uh, me to answer your que uh, me to answer your questions live, please post them into the Google form that I have linked in the description box below, because that means that I will not miss them because I'm not following the chat uh, every single second. Um, all right, next question <laughs> comes from, um, comes from, and I'm sorry, I might be butchering your name, Sajela, 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 I think the, it's a J, J Sajela, right, uh, by the way, if I but butcher your name, please let me know in the chat and, and teach me how to pronounce it correctly. Anyhow, um, Sajela is coming from Pakistan and uh, is applying to study in Finland next, in the next application period. And uh, she has a degree from the Pakistani Institute of Fashion and Design. Cool, that's awesome. And I'm aiming for master's in visual communication at Aalto University. Nice, that's awesome. Um, and uh, the fields are fields of interest are specifically fashion marketing and visual communication. All right, I will stop here uh, before you. I go to your question, I can tell you that Aalto University School of Arts and Design is number one in in the entire world in, I think, fas fashion design or so something like this. They rank extremely high in specifically in fashion. And uh, Aalto University students have been win winning uh, global prizes in fashion and di in design for years now. And uh, so if, if you get, um, get admitted to study at Aalto, Take everything out of the the, the degree as you can, uh, as possible because it, it is going to give you excellent career prospects for the future. Anyhow, the question: What is the scope of visual communication in Finland and Aldo for masters in VCD? Um, that's a really good question. Unfortunately, I cannot I don't have a direct answer to th to that um, because in Finland you can. Um, you can tailor your own degree to an ex certain extent. So, um, a master's degree in Finland is a hundred and is a hundred and twenty study credits, uh, ECTS. Uh, but again, that doesn't tell you much because you can tailor your structure of the structure of your studies um, quite heavily, so that you can, for, for example, decide what what you want to minor in, what you want to. Uh, what kind of electives, elective studies you want to do, what kind of language studies you want to do. So uh, I would recommend uh, that you go to... Um, I would recommend that you Google Alto University Visual Communication Design and instead of using this alto.fi link, if you can he see here, don't use this. This goes to the public uh, kind of application website. Instead, go into into.alto.fi. This is kind of like the internal uh, website of Alto. You, you you can access most of the stuff here, but um, students have access to a lot of more uh, more material here in the into.alto.fi website as well. Uh, this is basically like the intra intranet of Alto. No, not really, but you can find a lot more, lots more information here. And when you come to uh, the Into the website for the actual uh, program. You can then see from the from the left side. You can actually see the curriculum for from previous years, as well as the upcoming years. So from here, you can actually see what kind of the what is the structure uh, structure of the studies like, and you can actually see what kind of courses they have available. Um, so basically, if you go to the curriculum, you can see that you have major stu major studies, which are ninety credits. Uh, advanced major studies, 60 credits, your master's thesis, which is always 30, 30 credits, and then you have elective studies, which are 30 credits. And again, in total, master's degree is 120 uh, credits, ECTS. And um, again, you can go into every single one of these and you can check out what kind of courses they have available for the, the, the uh, different modules, basically. So again, for example, for major studies, which is uh, in, in total 90, 90 ECTS study credits, you can basically pick and choose the different courses that you want to do based on your preferences. There are some limitations, of course, but for example, in business school, there is a huge amount of flexibility here. <clears throat> and you can basically 
if you like, if you, for example, do um, a master degree in economics, you can basically do, econ you, ha you have to do specific uh, mandatory economics courses, but then you can tailor the rest of your degree, like, which is like half or two thirds almost of your studies, however you like. So, um, so this is really, really what I personally like about Finnish university degrees is that is the amount of uh, flexibility, the personal choice and the independency that you have in structuring your studies. So this is what I would do if I were you. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not that um, familiar with the program itself. So it, it's hard for me to, to, to tell you, you any more details without you actually going to the website. You're welcome. All right, the next question comes from Mervich, again, who comes from Lebanon and is applying in the upcoming application period to Aalto. And the um, question is, can I do a master's in Norway based on the bachelor's degree of applied science studies in Finland? Hmm. What is the favorite common food for students while studying? Why potatoes? Why are potatoes such a, a common vegetable or food in the in Finnish dish dishes? Um, all right, there's a, there's a lot of here. So... Uh, the first question, can I do a master's in Norway based on the ba on a bachelor's degree uh, in um, an applied uh, university of applied sciences uh, in Finland? I have no idea. Um, logic would dictate that yes, you could do because uh, Norway follows the same kind of or Norway do, uh, has a pre pretty similar university system that we have in the Nordics in general. So you could do uh, a master's highly likely. But again, you have to remember that if you want to do a master's study uh, degree uh, after you have done your bachelor's in a university of applied sciences, you need to first work from, from two to four years uh, full time after you have graduated in your own field. Uh, and only after that you are eligible to apply for a master's. That's at, at least how it works in Finland. So if you want to do a master's degree, I would recommend that you apply to a university because that's a fast, faster way to do a master's. Yeah. Uh, next question is, what is the co favorite co uh, common food for students while studying? Impossible question. We actually have a very diverse uh, food plate here, um, especially if you consider... For example, um, student restaurants that uh, serve student meals every single day, the, f the dishes change every single day and it's very rare for you to have the same thing, you know, three times, for example. Um, there are exceptions. For example, some restaurants have like sp spaghetti bolognese every single Thursday or, or um, pea soup or whatever. They have their like own dishes that they have every single week. But most of the time, the, the 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 foods change every single day. Plus, we have a lot of vari variability there. So, for example, if you uh, eat at the main student um, uh, cafeteria in at Aldo University campus, they have in they have in, usually just the one restaurant where I usually eat. They have three different meals for people who eat meat, and then they have at least one non-meat selection and then they have soups and then they then you can do just a salad so there is already quite a lot of variability there so we actually have really really darn good student meals in finland so it's hard to say what is like the most favorite food uh like in finland so yeah uh, potatoes are common in finland because they grow here <laughs> uh, and it's uh it's um, a lot of good nutrients um, compared to the uh, price uh, it's historically been very popular it's not it's very cheap all right the next question comes from Adil Yassar who comes from Pakistan as well and uh, has not yet decided whether or not he wants to study in Finland but is interested in studying or aeronautical engineering. I'm sorry, actually, uh, has already graduated from aeronautical engineering, if I understood correctly last week. And the question is, I want to ask that, is it hard for you as a student to get to used to everything like new people, new systems, and new systems? I would say where there are different minds to interact and exposure you get there, is is it bearable for undergraduate undergraduates? Yeah, totally. Mm. 
Uh, like, like for me, I've been thinking for such a long time, and I'm so upset. Um, don't know what to do or where to go. Yeah, totally. For for example, for me, there's a lot to lot to learn when you are a new student. However, again, in Finland, we have a very good tutoring system. So when you start as a new student at a university or University of Applied Sciences you will be assigned a personal study tutor who is actually a student, usually just one year ahead of you, and they're volunteers. And uh, their job is to make things easier for you when you basically transition into your student life. They help you set up your personal study plan, they help you set up your IT systems, your emails, they show you around the campus, they tell you how to get your student discounts to your public transpor uh, transportation tickets, they... Uh, um, take you to parties. They get. Uh, they help you introduce you to other people. Um, and uh, so, so I think the start, uh, the start of your studies in Finland is very easy. Normally, of course, with COVID, it's a bit different because we cannot see any anyone. Um, but um, but then, then on the other hand, you have to be very proactive and you have to be very independent. Um, Finland is very much a country that values independency. And uh, you have to be able to cope your, on your own. Um, for example, what is really funny, actually kind of sidetracking a bit, but this is actually a funny cultural thing that might come as new for some of you, is that when I was in Germany uh, doing my exchange in 2016, and, and we spoke with a bunch of um, exchange students there, an Italian guy asked me where I live in Finland. And I said that I live on my own in a student apartment and um uh in in helsinki and oh and, and the reply was oh you don't live with your parents oh no 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 i moved out when i was 20 uh to a student apartment which is closer to the the campus and the, the answer to that was oh really is everything okay with your family like uh why aren't you living with your parents is, is everything okay with your you and your parents yeah yeah totally uh, and the, the, the funny thing was there that in some european cultures as well it's pretty common for uh young adults and students to live with their parents and their family, uh, for example, until they get mar married, or at least until they, they graduate. On the other hand, in Finland, it is pretty abnormal for you to live with your parents uh, when you study. Some people just don't get a student apartment, so they have to stay at their parents, but basically everyone wants to move on their own when they get, get, a, uh, get a place in a university. Uh, because our our heads would explode if we would had uh, would explode if we had to actually live with our parents. We are ex extremely independent and we want to to make it on our on our own. Um, but yeah, so so a bit of background to the, the to the Finnish culture as well. I will jump really quickly into the chat once again, reiterating that if you guys want me to answer your questions, there is a Google form li linked in the description box below. Post your question there. And uh, I will answer your questions in a first-come, first-served basis. I will jump into the chat for just a second. Uh, look if there's any interesting comments there. And uh, I will have a drink. Today, not sponsored, drinking juice. Because sometimes water is not, not enough. Um... Let's see. Uh, Masrur asking, do they teach everyone how to shoot guns in the military? Uh, yeah, so yeah, again, referring back to the discussion that we had uh, at the start of the live stream is that um, if you are a Finnish citizen, if you are a male fi Finnish citizen, you have to do a mandatory military service when you're 18. And yes, when you go to the military, you have to learn how to shoot guns. That's kind of a part of the military. Um, again, but you need to be in the military service to do that. Uh, Finland, in general, has one of the some of the strictest gun laws in in the, in the entire world, which is really funny because we have uh, we actually have um, on average, I think we have. Uh, uh, I th I think after like the U.S., Switzerland, and maybe Afghanistan, we have like the the next most guns. Don't quote me on this, but we have like a huge amount of guns in Finland. But we have some of the most strictest gun laws in the entire world. And for example, most of the guns you cannot even have in your home. You have to keep them somewhere else. For example, at a shooting range or, or a shooting club. And um, of some people who own guns are going to correct me with on this. But um, 
yes, people get to learn how to shoot here. Be hunting is very popular in Finland. Um, however, we've we have we have a, an extremely low low gun homicide rate, for example, uh, because of the extremely extremely strict regulation that we have here. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, Kamesh, for example, and uh, everyone else, please just call me Oliver. We don't in Finland. We don't use sir. We don't use ma'am. We don't uh, use. We only always call each other with our first names. Uh, it it sounds really really funny to my ear when you when you for example call me sir or Mister Mister Oliver. Um, we're very um, uh, how do you say? We like to keep things quite. Um, how do you say? Chill here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, Aaron asking, I'm, I'm guessing the student guides or tutors aren't Finnish, lol, have you ever been a student guide? Yeah, so I basically, I, I was a tutor for one year or for students, um, the next, uh, who came after me, a year after me, and I was actually a tutor for an international student group, mm -hmm. so basically we had um, 12 new students who, who were, uh, half of them were Finnish, Finnish, and then half of them were internationals. And we ha actually had a lot of fun. And most of the the tutors are actually Finnish, but most, um, but we are uh, the student organizations who actually organized tutoring. They try to get as many internationals to join as well because it's easier for them to help international students with some of the issues and challenges that they face because it's it's more natural for them. So, anyhow, uh, let's jump in back into the form. Uh, the next question comes from Bikalpa who comes from Nepal, awesome, um, and uh, he has not yet decided whether or not he wants to study in Finland, but what well, is interested interested in studying in, um, interested in working in social social uh, fields, and uh, the question is, is Diakonia University good for social work for bachelor's studies, and do they teach in English? I do not know, let's see. Mm. Let's see. So, yes, yes, we accept cookies. Diac or Diaconia, uh, University of um, University of Applied Sciences, they have a bachelor's degree program in social services, um, which is. Multicultural study group that studies in English offers an opportunity to interact and learn in real interaction learning environment. Uh, so apparently that is in, uh, in English, yeah. Yeah, uh, apparently, yeah. Uh, I am not familiar with the Aconia, um, but again, the, the same reply applies here as well that I usually say to everyone when they ask me about a specific university or University of Applied Sciences that I'm not familiar with. Finnish, the level of Finnish high education is extremely high and actually the World Economic Forum ranks the skill level of Finnish graduates, university graduates, the third highest in the entire world. So even though Finnish universities might not rank that high, some of them, uh, on a global ranking scale, the level of education here is extremely good, and uh, the the gra um, the level uh, the skill levels of graduates is is extremely high uh, compared to any other country in the world. So again, if you find a degree, for example, at the bachelor's degree in social services uh, from a university or university of applied sciences, and you think that that program might be good for you. Don't think whether or not the school is actually good. All universities and universities of applied sciences in Finland are in general good and high quality. So apply where the program, so apply to a program uh, which is suitable for you and where you can actually get admitted, right? So don't think about the rankings. That's because that's that can actually, uh, the rankings don't tell you everything, right? Um, all right, next one comes from Juan, who comes from uh, Mexico. 
and uh, Juan is or Juan Vasquez, Juan Vasquez, sorry, uh, is applying to study in the University of Oulu in the next application period, specifically computer sciences and engineering. Awesome. And the question is: the passport I used for the IELTS test will expire in January, so I will have to get a the a new one before the application. Will there be a problem if the passport I used for the IELTS test is not the same as the one I will use to apply? I don't think so. This is actually a really good question, and um, uh, Juan, what I really recommend you do, do you to do is to reach out to the University of Oulu just in case. Uh, Arjun, what's up? Welcome back to the stream. Awesome to have you here as well. Um, so yeah, Juan, what I really recommend you to do, you to do is to uh, re reach out to the University of Oulu admission services right now be before the application start, because then they will be extremely busy um, and uh, it will take them quite a lot of time to apply, uh, reply to you and ask them the exact same question, because they will know the exact answers for you. M this is only a gut feeling that I have. And my gut feeling is that the passport that you use should not um, impact your application even though you have to update it in between it's a, it's a document uh, it, it will have the same information your personal information anyways you just need to update it so that it's still valid right as long as you you send uh, uh, the university of Oulu a picture of a valid passport and you've been able to do the IELTS test with a valid passport, I think you should be fine. But just in case, just in case, please, please, please reach out to the University of Oulu Admission Services. I will actually pull that out for you right now. Just a moment. All right. So Juan, I will have a link to a contact form. Uh, in the live chat right now. So go ahead and, and reach out to the University of Oulu using that contact form and they will get back to you with an answer. There. All right. The next question comes from... Salomon, who comes from Iran and uh, is applying to study in the University of Helsinki, specifically chemistry, in the next application period. Awesome, love that. Good luck with uh, the application. That uh, the getting admitted to study chemistry in in the University of Helsinki is going to be awesome if you get admitted. And um, the question is, what kind of students do does the University of Helsinki look for, and how to maximize my chance for receiving a scholarship? Mmm, that's a good question. <laughs> the University of Helsinki necessarily do doesn't want to find specific type of uh, students, or if they do, I don't know. However, if I, if I, again, please everyone take into account that I've never done, I've never processed applications to universities before, so you have to take everything that I say with a grain of salt. This is not the truth, this is just my gut feeling. When you apply, to a Finnish university and you, for example, need to write, for example, a motivation letter. You always have to keep in mind that the application or admission in Finland is done on a competitive basis <laughs> and only the best applicants are um, admitted. All right, so what is the best applicant? So, of course, the applications are graded based on, for example, if there's any exams like IELTS or SATs or GMATs or so on. However, those are standardized tests, so that's not a way for you to set yourself apart. Um, if you, for example, need to write a motivation letter, try to put yourself into the shoes of the admission um, processor, person, whoever it is, a professor, for example. What would I be looking for personally? I would be looking for someone who has high aspirations to do as well and innovate and, and innovate in your field. No university in Finland wants to get 
a person who just wants to get a degree because the degree is, is something that you need to do. Rather, they want to find people who are extremely enthusiastic about the field. They want to be in the tip of the spear, developing the field forward. Maybe if you're into startups, you want to set up a startup and uh, utilize your skills in that field. Um, and uh, again, it's hard for me to think about this not right now because it's a complicated, complicated question, but you need to learn how to separate yourself from the pack. Um, and uh, again, there are a lot of, I'm sure, blogs and uh, YouTube videos and, and tutorials about this online. I don't have any because I don't have any any real experience on this or expertise. So I would uh, I would not like to to guide you uh, because that would probably <laughs> end up with bad results. However, my attitude towards this would be all would always be to think. How am I going to put take this field and do some something that innovates and, and takes this field a bit forward? Not just yourself, but also the university. How can you actually help the university becoming even a better even a even better than it's currently now? Uh, is it your research or do you are do you want to set up a startup that is going to be highly successful and that is going to bring up the name of the university itself? And I don't know. Um and how to maximize your chances of receiving a scholarship? I impossible for me to say because the uh, the exact requirements and the weights of the requirements. For example, if you have to do your SATs, you have a motiva motivation letter, etc. I don't know what the weights are between these or, or how they're weighted. And this is because this information is not public and the universities don't publicize this information and the exact requirements and or the points that you need. So it's impossible for me to say. All right, the next question comes from Karina from Peru, who is again applying in the next application period to do English studies. And the question is, if I get the uh, if I get accepted from the university I want to apply to, uh, the university of, uh, universities of Helsinki or Oulu, when would be the appropriate time to apply for a student apartment if I get accepted in March or Ap April? And how expensive is beer in Finland? Oh man, now you hit the now you now you went some somewhere where you really don't want to go to. Um, all right, so first first of all, that's a really good question. Um, so the appropriate time to apply for a student apartment is as soon as you're allowed to. And what does this mean? So, for example, in Helsinki and in Oulu, they have different student apartment providers in these cities. So the rules with these between these providers might be a bit different. Uh, I don't know the providers in Oulu, so it's hard for me to, to comment on that, but you, could, you can look, this, uh, look up this information. However, how this works in Helsinki, for example, is that if you apply to study in the University of Helsinki and you get admitted, there are basically two places where you can apply for student uh, apartments. The student apartments from the University of Helsinki Student Union, they actually have apartments of their own. And then you can, can apply for apartments from HOAS. So the foundation of student apartment, um, uh, the HOAS, HOAS which uh, is, is the largest uh, student apartment provider in the Helsinki region. Uh, and one of the sponsors of the channel, by the way. Um, HOAS allows you to apply for student apartments at earliest four months before you need to move in. All right. However, some student student unions allow you to apply for their apartments the second that you get it and uh, the admission letter in your mail. For example, Aalto University Student Union allows you to apply for their apartments the second that you know that you're admitted. So, for example, that could be six months before you start your studies. Uh, the reason here is that student union apartments usually have extremely long queues and you need to apply super early, like months and months beforehand even if you want to if you, if you want to have an even slight chance of getting an apartment then again however for example hoas doesn't have a an uh, they don't have a, a real queuing system they don't have queue numbers rather they prioritize people who come from who don't have that high financial um, funds themselves so they prioritize people based on their financial finances basically and uh, 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 and they allow you to apply only 4 months before 
But the answer here to your question, when would be, would be the appropriate time to apply is the second that you're allowed to. A lot of people leave uh, leave the, the application for student apartments to the last minute and it means that they will not get an apartment. The last minute also means that if, if you apply for a student apartment a month before you come to Finland, you will most likely not get a student apartment. The queues are extremely long because the, the apartments are super cheap and they're ex extremely in, in, in super high demand. Sorry, ranting about this, but basically this is su such an important topic. Apply for the student apartments the second that you're allowed to by the rules. All right, the next question comes from Salomon and the, no, sorry, that I that one I got already. That one I got as well. All right, the next next question comes from Ilaria, who comes from Italy and is uh, starting school this semester in pharmaceutical biotechnologies. Nice, that's cool. Um, anyways, the question is, hi Oliver, do you know any cheap but good hostels or apartment hotels in Helsinki where it's possible to stay while waiting for COVID test results? Um, that's a really good one. Um, I, I remember that there are a few. Actually, uh, in 2016, when I came back from Germany, uh, there was uh, a Mexican student in the seat next to me, and he was actually coming to study in Finland. And uh, he didn't have a student apartment, so ha he had to live in a hostel for like a couple of weeks, which was a bit stupid because it's super expensive. Um, I remember I actually brought him to that hostel or, or like um, uh, apartment hotel, but I don't remember the name. I, I guess if you just Google apartment hotel Helsinki, you are going to get a bunch of different results. Ah, this one actually, yeah. So there is one. Um, oh, never mind. That's super ex expensive. Yeah, no, I I don't remember any anyone any, any uh, from the top of my head. There are a bunch I do know that that are somewhat cheaper compared to like actual hotel rooms. Um, but if you need to stay in, for example, uh, in uh, for example, in a hotel for a week, you can find relatively cheap hotel rooms in Helsinki, especially during the COVID time, because we don't have any tourists here. So I would not be, I would not hesitate in looking actually in actual, uh, at the actual hotel hotels. And you can use like Trip uh, TripAdvisor to do it, do it. So I think that should be fine. Evgenia, welcome to the stream, meme review. Uh, what is up? Awesome to have you here. Um, just to let you know, I'm going to uh, keep the, the stream today relat relatively short because my brain is completely dead by now. It's been a long week, but awesome to have you here as well. Uh, there is a bunch of bunch of questions already in the in the uh, form, Evgenia. So if you want to have your um, questions asked answered. Um, have them in the in the form or just in the chat and I'll, I'll jump to them right away. Uh, by the way, why I'm saying this to Yevgenia is because Yevgenia is actually a channel member. So so this is actually one of the perks of being a channel member. So if you want your questions to be pri being prioritized, consider join joining the channel membership by clicking the, I think, no, there, the join button below the video right there. And uh, you will get other awesome perks as well. Anyways, the next question comes from Kamesh, who comes from India and uh, has not yet decided whether or not he wants to study in Finland. Mm. But the question is, can I do an ACCA course in Finland? What an ACA course in Finland? What is an ACA course? Hmm. Association of Chartered Certified Accountants. Mm. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, that's a very good question. Um, I have no idea. I've never heard of ACA before. I don't know what it's for. But for professional accountants, they aim for offer business relevant first choice qualifications for people of a application ability and ambitious around blah, 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 who seek a, a rewarding career in accountancy, finance, and management. 
Um, that's a really good question. I have no idea. Um, that's um, why would you want to do an ACA course uh, instead of doing a, a degree in accounting, for example, masters in accounting? I don't know. I actually, I actually did my bachelor's in in accounting, and uh, I've never heard of ACA, ACA. So it's it might be that you you do get you have certificate courses in Finland, but again, most of the people here would do a bachelor's in accounting, and then they would maybe do a master's in accounting or finance as well. That will give you pl plenty of uh, qualification enough to to work in accounting or in finance or uh, um, you know business administration. So. It's impossible for me to answer this question because I, I don't really know what the benefits of ACA are or ACCA. Uh, if you want to let me know what ACCA basically, what the benefits of it are, just let me know in the chat and I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. Uh, Vines, also awesome to have you here as well. Saurav, what's up, man? Uh, Apunayem, what is up? Also, also awesome to have you here as well. And Mad Fox, what is up? Awesome, awesome to have all the all the all of you guys here live. Um, Elena here as well. Welcome back to the live stream. Awesome to have you here as well. Uh, also, thank you, Elena, for guiding people to towards the Google form. Uh, again, the chat is pretty busy right now, and I will most likely miss most of the questions that have been already posted into the chat. I will ba jump back and forth from the chat into the form every now and then, but I will prioritize the form all the time. Talking of which, the next question uh, from the form comes from Stefan from Greece, who is applying to study in Finland in the next application period to a bunch of different universities of applied sciences, but the field is international business. And uh, the question is, is a bachelor's degree from a university of applied sciences equivalent to a bachelor's from a university? Will I have trouble in a job? For example, will I have a tr uh, trouble in in a job or in my career if I don't have a pure university degree? Also, from my list of universities of applied sciences, which one of which one do you think is the best choice? UAS. Those are just uh, abbreviations of the school's names. Um, so, good question. I actually. Uh, Stefan, talking about this topic, I actually posted a video explaining universities and universities of applied sciences and the different the differences between them. Um, just this Tuesday, so I really recommend that you check out that video for a bit more details. However, I don't go that di that deep into the topic of like career. Um, prospects in that video. So, here we go. A bachelor's degree from a university of applied sciences is not equivalent to a bachelor's degree from a university. Here, here's why. A univer the universities of applied sciences in Finland um, teach more practical degrees and uh, the degrees are are for people who aim to graduate into a specific uh, uh, career, basically. So if you want to be a, an accountant, for example, uh, you need you should do a, a degree from a University of Applied Sciences because they teach accountants there. You also can you can also study accounting at a university. However, your university degree will go much, much deeper into accounting and financial structuring, um, auditing, and etc. compared to a University of Applied Sciences degree. And if you graduate, when you graduate from a university, again, remember, if you study at a university, you will never stop at a bachelor's degree. You will always do a master's as well. In Finland, that is almost man. It's not mandatory, but it's basically mandatory, because if you leave your university studies to a bachelor's degree, then people will ask you when you apply for jobs, when are you you go, you're going to finish your master's, because you are automatically admitted to do also a master's degree at a university, and basically just doing a bachelor's at a university is considered as quitting your studies early. So. 
when you do a bachelor's, which is three years, and then you do a master's, which is two years, you're going to go much deeper academically, theoretically, uh, in, in subs substance into the topic compared to University of Applied Sciences degrees. So no, they are not equivalent. However, you will not also be doing the same jobs. So again, keep this in mind. So if you study accounting in a University of Applied Sciences, you will most likely work at least for the first X amount of years as an accountant. And only after getting a lot of experience can you then move forward to work, for example, to work as an auditor. Actually, you cannot work as an auditor because you need a, a certificate, but you can then move into other administrative work jobs. However, if you, uh, if and when you graduate as a master's in accounting from a university, you will never work as an accountant. It's it's not. You need to. You basically need to apply for higher positions because accounting is not a suitable position basically for a, a master's graduate. You you have to do, go higher. Um, so no, they're not equivalent. So however then, uh, of course, if you don't apply for the same jobs, rather, um, uh, and, and for example, you just want to move on, build your career after your USA degree, for example, as a bachelor's in, uh, in accounting or business, uh, no, you will not have, a, have problems with your career, again, because that is a direct, uh, di different career path. Um, so, for example, for me, um, if I'm if I do a um, degree in finance in at a University of Applied Sciences uh, ver versus a universe uh, university, so bachelor's versus master's, we will not be doing the same jobs. So you will not have a problems because you're not compared to a master's degree student or graduate. I hope this is clear enough. You have to understand that they're not necessarily better or worse than the other. There are different path paths that you can take within multiple different fields. If you want me to elaborate on this a bit more, then please let me know, but you have to understand that they're not comparable in that sense. And also, of course, if you want to do a master's after doing a university of, um, after doing your bachelor's in a university of applied sciences, you can apply for a master's, but you need to first work for two to four years in your field full time before you can apply for a master's. Yeah, you're welcome, uh, of course. And uh, again, these are complicated topics. I, I've been, I've been, I've been studying in in the school of business for almost eight years now. Don't ask me why. Um, but uh, this is all kind of information that has accumulated in, in my brain for all, over nine years because I I spent a year in in the application process. So so I I do understand if this is confusing, and this is why this channel exists. And this is why the, I do these live streams, because it's easier for me to explain these orally compared to, for example, expel explaining these in the comment section. Um, about the universities of applied sciences that you listed, like Tam Kiam, Hagahelia, Ham Klamk, Karelia, none of them is necessarily better than the other. Uh, the one thing is that Hagahelia is in the Helsinki region, so that's really nice. So the capital region is, is of course, the best place to live. <laughs> I'm a bit biased. Um, so I would, I would check which one of them has the best scholarship options? I'm sorry, actually, it doesn't matter. Uh, apply to you because you're from Greece. But I would I would basically check which of them seem better to you. Um, which city is better for you, personally? Do you like uh, be living in a large city? Would you like to live in a, live in a smaller city next, next to uh, nature? Um, and uh, which your, uh, school has the best like student activity possibilities? I would uh, approach this that way, basically. Of course, uh, this again, this is the reason why this channel exists. So you're welcome. Uh, I, I, I really like doing this. Ranting on my own on a Thursday evening. <laughs> Anyhow, um, the next question comes from Vikalpa, who comes from Nepal. And um, the question is, is Diakonia University good for social work? Courses. Uh, basically, I already already answered this. I don't know. I don't have any personal experience about Diakonia. However, I can say that uh, all the Finnish universities and universities of applied sciences are um, very high quality. The education here is very high quality, uh, measured on in, on a global level. So, so if they have a course in social work, you should definitely apply. 
I, I don't really have anything to say about that anymore. Um, I want to know more about it, have searched the internet, but if you know something a bit different, please uh, let me know. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't know, cause, because I, first of all, I don't have any personal experience from uh, diac Diaconia. Uh, I've never been to the campus physically myself. I don't have any friends who have actually gone there. Um, I don't have any friends who have actually studied social work because most of my friend, uh, like circle of friends, come from from the business world or engineering, uh, and the and the the, the um, Alta University, naturally. Um, so it's impossible for me to say. You have to remember it that Finland is a very large country geographically, and we have um, what do we have? Um, Let's see how many universities we have. We have 13 different universities and 22 different. <laughs> we have 13 different universities and 22 different universities of ap applied sciences in Finland. That's 35 different universities or institutions of higher learning in Finland, and they're spread all across the country. And all of these schools have multiple different faculties and all of the faculties have multiple different programs under them. So we are talking about over 400 different English taught degrees or the programs that you can apply into. And I only know about a few of them because I've studied two of them. And then I have friends who study maybe like in 20 different programs. But you have to excuse me in, in, in a sense because I, I simply don't have information about all the different programs. The next question comes from Denise uh, from Turkey, um, who is still in high school. Oh, it's working. Cool. Um, by the way, yeah, guys, um, I, I added um, an option into the form saying that you're still in high school. Denise was uh, telling me that there's no option for that. So thank you for the feedback. And um, the question is, are there only 10 universities in Finland? No, there are not. There's 13 universities in Finland. That's a Wikipedia article. Let's see. Yeah, no. So, so no. So there's not... Okay, I'll, I'll just show you this page. So what I just mentioned is that we have 13 different universities and 22 different universities of applied sciences. Dennis uh, looked up the Wikipedia article about Finland. So you can see that there's 10 different multidisciplinary universities here. And then we have four specialized universities here. So how the how how do we come up to the number 13 in universities is we have these these 10 universities university of helsinki Op opo academy university of turku jyväskylä oulu vaasa lapland uh, eastern finland alto university tampere, tampere university however then we have the hanken school of economics which is a university as well but it's a it's solely a business school so alto university has three different uh, six different schools inside of it uh, Hanken is basically one school, but it's still university level. Um, then we have Laperanta Lahti University of Technology, uh, which is also a specialized university. And then we have the University of Arts Helsinki. Uh, however, the reason why we don't, oops, sorry, reason why we usually don't count this school, the National Defense University, into the different 13 different universities is because this is a very, very highly specialized university and you cannot, there is very strict uh, reg regulation on who can apply there. So it's not a research university in the, in the normal sense. It is a, it is basically the same as, um, uh, if anyone rem remembers the name of the, the American uh, officer school e in the New York State. Um, it's ba but basically, this is a military academy. In you know, if we simplify this a bit. However, then we have uh, universities of applied sciences in Finland. Whoops, universities of applied sciences in Finland. We have twenty-two of those as is said, said here. And they, again, all, also sp are spread around the, the country. So Aaron, no, it's not, it's not a boot camp. I'm not sure if, if you're 
joking or not, but um, so it's it's basically a university level degree. So you have to do five years there or you do five years there. And after that, you graduate as an officer in the Finnish uh, Defense Force. And uh, you can either, for example, uh, you can do a post postdoc or doctoral degree there as well. Uh, and um, for example, if you want to fly jets in the Finnish um, Defense Force, you have to uh, first study in the National Defense University. And actually the the jet uh, fighter pilot program in Finland is is it 10 years long or you have you have to at least stay there for i think 10 years or if you drop out you have to pay for your the the education which is freaking expensive it's in the hundreds of thousands i think um so that's that's a way they want to to they want to keep the people there because the education is so darn ex- expensive uh wahid uh I'm sorry that I haven't been able to answer your your messages. Unfortunately, I've been absolutely bombarded by by people in different pa- platforms, uh, not only on on social media but also on on in my into my different uh, email accounts, uh, in the YouTube comments, in Discord. So it's impossible for me to get uh, to answer everyone in time um, because I I have hundreds of messages all across, and I really want to take my time in replying to you. So. Um, uh, it's it simply it's not possible for me to to answer your everyone's question uh, immediately. I'm I'm sorry about that, but simply it's it, it's impossible. And I think that it's all only going to get worse now that the applications are opening because more and more people are reaching out. So um, uh, sorry about that. Anyhow, the next question comes from Abhi. Abhi from India, uh, who is uh, who who has not yet decided whether or not he wants to study in Finland, but is interested in uh, computer engineering. And the question is, hey, I DM'd my PR question to you in Discord. Ah, I will look into it. I will definitely look into it again. Sorry, I haven't been... I have actually Discord open here. I have like 20 DMs there open that I haven't even seen yet because people are, again, bombarding me on different channels. Uh, This is one of the reasons why I actually have the Discord server. I I know that I, I asked you specifically to send me a dm but this is one of the reasons why i actually have the discord server because then uh i'm not the only person who can reply but others can uh contribute as well if they know the answers to answer to questions however of course i will deal with the dms a bit later but again i've been bombarded every everywhere currently so it, it just takes me time i'm sorry about it next question comes from elena and the question is, hi Oliver, I'm, I'm I'm applying next week. Awesome. Thank you for all the, all of your videos and advi- advices. You're most welcome. I'm glad if they brought you some value. Uh, and my question is, is it possible for a wildlife phot- photographer to reach places where there is wildlife, even just birds, even without access to a car, if I get uh, get accepted to my main campus that will be in Viki? Oh yeah, totally, absolutely. Actually, Viki, the Viki campus is really cool because they have the, um, uh, yeah, because you're going to study microbial uh, biotechnology, but they also have their um, the University of Helsinki, Helsinki Agricultural Faculty, Faculty of Agricultural uh, Sciences there, and they actually have a lot of really cool nature uh, nature paths path paths there that you can <laughs> sorry here. Um, that you can, uh, for example, walk. Uh, and then if you want to really go into nature, you can actually go to what is called uh, Nuxio, which is one of the uh, national um, parks in Finland. Let me just show you. So here is Helsinki. And, um, whoops. Here is the Viik com- campus here and uh, here is the uh, center of Helsinki so uh, Espoo is the neighboring city to Helsinki and uh, the University of Aalto the the campus of Aalto University is here so that's actually this is seven kilometers here using this um, main road so it's not far and um, if you come to Nuuksio which is um, the exact borders are a bit vague here here you go the Nuuksio National Park, which is here, it's a really, really lovely national park to which you can get with a bus. Takes maybe an hour, 
45 minutes from the center of Helsinki, but that is actually very popular with uh, hikers, who want, people who want to do like uh, day walks. Um, a lot of uh, nature photographers actually go there to to take pictures. But then actually there's a lot of really cool, um, uh, like, um, how do you say? Like urban nature photographers in Finland who actually... F um, basically chase different uh, urban animals, so qu squirrels, uh, foxes, different birds in the in, Hel in the Helsinki city. Uh, because when the city dies down and, and, and in the evening, uh, you can actually see quite a lot of action here as well, if you know where you're looking. So um, that's actually cool. But yeah, Na Nuxio National Park, definitely you can come here by car. They have good directions there if you just follow the uh, set pa paths. And uh, there's a lot of really, really cool things to see here. So absolutely, yes. Uh, by the way, actually, um, talking about it, Elena, I would love to follow your Instagram. If you're posting any of your wildlife photography pictures on Instagram, I actually, most of the people that I follow on Instagram are actually wildlife or nature photographers. So I would love to follow you and see what kind of work you're doing because I love the, uh, I love the art a lot. So just let me know in the, for example, in the chat, everyone else could also follow you if you want to, or if you want to DM, DM your, me your, the link, I would uh, love to see what kind of pictures you're taking. Uh, anyways, the next question comes from Hussein Shaik, who comes from India and is, apl is applying to study here in the next application period. And um, is interested in doing a bachelor's in commerce or in business. And the question is, I want to study in Finland and my master's there. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, so I master's, but I'm still confused to which course should uh, course should I t uh, apply to? Can you help with this? Um, what should I do? A master's in economics, master's in accounting, or in finance? Which is the best best degree to get internships or jobs easily uh, with a business background? And if I know any good courses, please suggest them to me. So again, oh, oh, all right, so the terminology here is a bit mixed. So when we're talking about courses, we're talking about degree programs or university programs, actually. Um, and uh, so this is an impossible question for me to ask because it is not up to me to tell you which degree to do. Because if I tell you what you, what you need to do, you're going to do a degree based on someone else's recommendation. That is, in my mind, the one of the worst decisions that you, you can make. And here's the reason why. I, as I mentioned before, I did my bachelor's in accounting. Uh, the reason being that I knew that accounting graduates always have jobs because there's always jobs for people who have done a master's in accounting or in business administration. Th the same goes to graduates in finance in, and in economics as well. These are very highly sought after degrees. However, I've never been a numbers guy. I never liked mathematics. I've never liked numbers per se, which is kind of odd if you want to do a, do a degree in accounting, which is basically just numbers and, and working with Excel. Meaning that I went with a recommendation from other people because they said that that's a good thing to do if you want to have a certain job. I, but I ended up hating my degree and I absolutely loathed, hated the, the courses that I had to do. I didn't like them. I wasn't interested in them at all. This, this, what this caused was that my motivation went down. I did really badly with my bachelor's level basic degrees and I burned out really badly. And I, uh, I was basically out of uh, action for half a year. I wasn't able to do anything in terms of school for six months because I was so burnt out. And when I get got back to back to school, it took me a long time to get back on track. Again, because I, w I didn't have any motivation. And because I didn't have any motivation, my gra grades in my uh, degree sucked, meaning that I would not have been able to get a job in, in business. So don't do a degree based on what someone else tells you is suitable. Do something that you're actually interested in. So again, 
in my bachelor's, I did really badly because I, I had no motivation for the job, meaning that I would never be able to get those high level jobs because no one would like to hire me into this kind of, you know, numbers position again, because I did really badly. But then I changed uh, my, my field for my master's and I did um, my master's in entrepreneurship and innovation management, basically meaning management consulting, um, uh, sustainable business, uh, etc. And I did that was really interesting to me. It was more like psycholo psych psychology based. It was people based and uh, strategy based. And I loved it. I was really interested. And I basically raised my GPA from I, my GPA from my bachelor's was exactly three out of five. And uh, my master's is ma my master's GPA now after do uh, after I've done all of my courses, my GPA is nine four point nine five out of five. So almost perfect. So the only reason that I got such high grades is that I was super interested in the topic and now I have no problems at getting a job. However, I, that, this is the reason why I don't want to recommend any specific field to anyone who doesn't really know what they want to do. You need to figure out that yourself. All of these fields, economics, accounting and mass, uh, finance, all of them have excellent job uh, uh, opportunities. And uh, uh, if you do a gr um, uh, master's there and you do well, you will have good career prospects. However, if you do something that you hate, do you really want to work in a field that, that you hate for 65 years? Plus, you have to take into account that if you want to do a really well, good career, how are you going to get those good jobs if you have no motivation to do it because you hate what you do? Again, don't do something based on some, what someone else says, do something based on uh, what you actually like. This is one of the reasons why I think that parents forcing their children to do uh, study some a specific subject is one of the worst things that you can have because then you are doing what your parents want, not what you want. And that usually uh, ends up in people with low, to mo low, low motivation, low self-esteem, and uh, uh, for example, a lot, of, a lot of mental problems mental health problems. I, I've seen this in, in, in our school because some people think that they need to study finance because that's the that's the way to go. You Everyone has to become a banker, financial banker. But after four years of studying finance, like super tired, zero motivation, they understand that that's just not for them. And they and then they change their uh, field in mid-studies. Mid so yeah, yeah, Aaron, I think that getting a high GPA is not based on your brain it's not based on your iq it's based on what what is what are you actually interested in i've never been that good in school i've always been mediocre in school i didn't do that well in high school for example i was i was in debt center in 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 high school but then i found my motivation to do well in in um, in my masters and now i was basically one of my, my uh, one of the best in my class um one of my cousins who was never really interested in school um for some reason found motivation to actually study um, just before the high school ended, before we did our um, fi uh, high school finals. And uh, he got excellent results from his high school finan fin uh, finals. And now he has two different master's degrees, one in business and one in fi uh, one in law. And he, for some reason, he just found motivation to actually study. He found an interest towards these kind of subjects and he was able to sail through two different master er, bachelor's and master's degrees. So again, what are you interested in? What is up, Shannon? Welcome to stream. Awesome to have you here as well. Um, uh, Shannon, actually, if you roll all the way back into the start of the stream, I actually answered one of your, your questions, I think, from last week. If I remember correctly, it, it might have been the first or the second question. Not completely sure. If you want to rewind a bit, uh, just make make uh, sure if I um, answered your question and then come back here, here live to check it out. JDMO86, thank you for helping out. That is exactly correct. Uh, please, if you have any questions that you would like me to answer live, please post them into the Google form that is linked in the description box below because the chat is really busy and I will miss your question if you post your question into the live chat. So post your question in the Google form and I will be able to see the questions here in front of me on my computer and I will go through them one by one in a first come first serve basis. Next one from the stream, I'm sorry, next one from the form, meme review, comes from Merovich. 
again from Lebanon. And the question is, when uh, when does university studies normally start in the morning? At what time? Uh, are there any night shift courses? And I can I go for Finnish language center courses while studying my ma main um, uh, degree? Great questions. Let's take this one by one. University courses normally in Finland start around 9.15, 10.15. So we actually have something called the academic quarter, meaning that uh, most of the university courses, this is not a general rule, but it's a rule of thumb. So most university courses start 15 past the hour. So for example, if if, uh, if you have a class at 10, that, that course usually starts at 10.15. Actually, the historical reason for this, is, is, it's really funny, is that when um, at a time, uh, 100, 100 years ago, um, when... Um, over a hundred years ago, when the first universities in Finland opened up, we didn't have watches, we didn't have phones, of course, so no one could keep time on their own. And um, rather, we would have these massive uh, clock towers uh, in the big cities, and um, they would all they will they would chime once a uh, once per hour, so on the hour. And uh, of course, if the class started at the hour, everyone would be late because they would only they would know when ten when it's ten o'clock because the clock would chime. Instead, the clock would chime and then you would have 15 minutes to get into class. So that is why we have the academic quarter. That is why we always have 15 minutes after the hour to get into class. Again, not every class starts at 15 past, but most of them do. Um, yeah, usually our classes start at 9-ish, uh, 10-ish. I, I don't remember ever having a course that started at 8. No one wants to do 8. <laughs> um, are there any night shift courses? Um, unless your degree demands you to do night shifts for, for some reason, there are, no, there, there will not. So for example, if you study like astrophysics, then I'm sure that you, will mi may, might, you might have some night shifts or night courses, maybe. If you study uh, to be a nurse, then you will have mandatory uh, practice or, or internships in hospitals, and then you will need to work night shifts. If you study to be a doctor, then you will have night shifts, but those will not be, but those will not be classes. So all all classes are always taught during the day. Again, as a general rule, rule of thumb, I'm sure that there are ex uh, exemp exceptions exceptions to the rule. Um, and ga can I go and study in the Finnish language center while studying my main degree? Yes, you can. Uh, and uh, I highly recommend that every one of you who are interested in studying in uh, studying Finnish language. I recommend that you specifically take as many Finnish language courses in the universe during university as you, uh, you possibly possibly can. For Christ, as you possibly can. There's three main reasons for this. Number one being that they're free of charge. Of course, you might be needing a, you might have to pay tuition, but they are a part of your degree, so you can study as many Finnish language courses as you want during the university studies. Second, you have the highest level ed, uh, Finnish language education that you can get anywhere. Um, not only are the teachers very highly educated and they're qualified, and uh, of course, um, you know, there, most of them are native Finns, so you will not get a better edu educator than at a university. And take into account that you will also have a class full of people who are in the same situation as you, so you will get peer, um, you know, uh, peer support. You will all be in the same situation. You can help each other to learn. You can actually get to know a lot of people during your Finnish classes. And third, you can actually get credits from your Finnish courses towards your degree. So. Uh, depending on your degree and how it's structured, you can actually add X amount of Finnish courses into your degree. So you get credits. Uh, for example, if your degree includes 20 credits, so 20 ECTS credits um, from language courses that you need to take, you might be able to take like four, three, four courses of Finnish easily. And then you might have a mandatory English and mandatory something else, but uh, uh, but yeah, definitely take your finish in uh, in your degree. Highly recommended. <coughs> mandatory disclaimer: This is water, even though it's in a Guinness pint. It is just water. Uh, 
Um, the next question comes for... Uh, before we actually jump, yeah, so Stefan, I applied for a bachelor's too, yes. I, I've done both my bachelor's and my master's degrees at Aalto University. So um, in Finland, we after we do high school, after we finish high school, um, of course, men do the, the mili their military service and some, some people actually take a year off, for example, gap year to travel around the world. But uh, we basically apply to, to university directly after high school or University of Applied Sciences. And uh, of course, you always have to start with the bachelors. And um, uh, many people start, um, if they graduate, for example, in the summer, they might start their university studies already that same autumn uh, if, they, if they get admitted the same year. Um, it, it took me two tries to get in to Aalto University. First time I didn't really try. I thought that I, 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 I thought that I tried to apply, but I, I didn't really put in the effort. The, then I went to do my military service for a year. And then after I got out of the military, I basically spent five months, uh, for 10 hours on average in the library studying for the entrance exams. And then I got, uh, in to Aalto University. Mm. Uh, Yevgeny are asking. Yeah, uh, Dennis, uh, it's it's a really <laughs> it's a really cool story. Uh, again, goes back back into the uh, in the time uh, to the history of Finland. Uh, Yevgeny are ask asking, is it hard to find a job after the English language masters, for example, from the University of Helsinki? What's the point for the Finnish government to provide Finnish education for free in English? and then let graduates leave the country. Um, yeah, that's... Um, so wait, for the Finnish government to provide Finnish education for free in English? Oh, do you mean the... Uh, do you mean the, 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 the like a Finnish hi higher education? So like bachelor's or... Um, Masters. I, I, Yevgeny, actually, I don't uh, really get the second question. If you want to elaborate, what, what do you mean? Uh, however, to the first one, is it hard to get a job after uh, English language masters? Um, actually, okay, Yevgeny, elaborate a bit. Do you mean with an English language masters? Do you actually mean like an English taught masters degree? Like, for example, for you, like a, a, an IT degree in English. Is that what you mean? Just let me know in the chat, and I'll, I'll get back to back to that as well. All right, cool. All right. Uh, no, it's not. It's not particularly hard to get a get a job after get de doing a master's degree in Finland in English. Reason being that actually most Finnish master's degrees are actually being trans transitioned into English because, of course, we need to international internationalize. Um, only a f handful of master's degrees in Finland are taught in Finnish, and those most most of them are in hard sciences and, for example, in the medical field. Right, so Eng English taught, exactly. So, okay, then I got it right. So, yeah, so basically e almost every single one of master's degrees in Finland is in English, uh, with few exceptions, because, for example, in the medical field, you still need to study certain things in Finnish, because, of course, all the systems are in Finnish. Um, uh, all the standard standards are in Finnish, etc., and you need to be able to cope with the Finnish language systems. So that is why most of the medical degrees are in uh, in in Finnish. However, for, for example, in business, I don't. Th there's maybe like one master's de degree program in 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 the entire country that is in Finnish or something like this, and most of these are again transitioned to English because we need to internationalize. Um, and uh, yeah, that's a really good question. So um, you have again, you're asking what, what point for is, is there for fi the Finnish government to provide Finnish education for free in English? Uh, so basically teach English taught degrees uh, in Finland and then let graduates leave the country. That's a good question. That is why we have tuition fees for non-European ec economic uh, uh, citizens, because a lot of people were leaving the country and, and, and it's super expensive for Finnish taxpayers to fund the education for internationals who come to Finland and then leave. Um, and uh, the experience was that actually quite a lot of people came here just for the, the education and then they left to other countries and there's no incentive for the government to do that. So that is why we have tuition fees for non-European economics, European uh, 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 Union or European Economic Area citizens. Um, however, 
of course, that is a risk everyone has to take that when you give education, even for the European econo- uh, European Union citizens, some of them leave, some of them, them, them st- stay here, um, but some of them leave, even a bunch of Finnish students leave to, to do their careers abroad. After they graduate, it's completely normal, and that is just a risk assessment that you have to do. Uh, but I think that that is some that, that is one of the reasons why the tuition fees for non-EU and EEA citizens in Finland are so high, because you have to balance out the kind of the loss in tax revenue versus the uh, um, versus the tuition fees that are g- gathered, basically. If if you get what I mean. Um, Yeah, so, so the, uh, all right, so Yevgenia saying uh, that as for the second question, I mean the government pays so much for educating students and then they can't find the job, a job and then they leave. That's true, and that is actually a big problem for the entire government, government and that, that's why there's actually multiple different... Um, uh, there are different uh, teams working in the government uh, uh, trying to mitigate the problem. There are a huge amount of different companies trying to fix this issue. I'm trying to fix this issue by telling you guys to come here and study and actually work here as well. It's one of the reasons why I actually want to also talk about job hunting in Finland, because it's not enough that you do a degree here. You also need to know how to find a job. And it's not easy, but it's not also easy for Finnish nationals either. So, uh, however, that, that is very true that some people do find it difficult and then they leave. That is a problem, and we need to work together to fix it. Uh, Yevgenia, I, I would not be worried about you or your husband at all, um, especially if, if you decide to stay in, in the IT field, because that, that field is blooming, and it's actually mostly multicultural and international. Most IT companies are actually international, so I would not be worried at, uh, at all. Anyhow... Um, I'm jumping ahead to to answer the question from Stefan. Um, and uh, the question is, I'm going to bother you again because I have another question. Keep them coming. You're not bothering me at all. This is the sole reason for these uh, live streams. So keep the questions coming. Uh, I will try my shot. Uh, can students from universities of applied sciences get a part-time job? I heard the schedule is very complicated, like eight hours a day for five days a week, and I don't know what part-time jobs you can get with that. Like, can you get a job in cleaning supermarkets at restaurants, etc., with this schedule? That's a very good point. All right. Let's talk about the the schedule differences between universities and universities of applied sciences. And now that you actually mentioned this, I feel really silly for not uh, addressing this in the video about universities and uh, UASs. Uh, Yevgenia, you're welcome. By the way, Yevgenia, I will I will get back to you on Discord uh, later this week. I already made a video answering your question. Um, again, by the way, guys, if you want to know what I'm talking about, Yevgenia is a member in the channel, and uh, being a channel gives you a certain perk. So, for example, access to a um, members-only Discord channel where uh, I I spend quite a lot of effort and time to actually communicate with you individually. So I, I'll get back to you uh, later this week when I have a bit more time to formulate my my thoughts. Um, so, Stefan, really good question. So it is true that <laughs> uh, degrees in universities of applied sciences are more... How should I say? They're more uh, strict and they're more controlled compared to um and Jochen studios I'm, I'm actually having a good day i'm a bit tired so i might keep uh, keep the stream a bit short but awesome to have you here um so yeah so u- universities of applied sciences usually have their curriculum a bit more strict than in universities so there's less f- flexibility there so there's not that much there's you have less p- opportunities and possibilities to actually uh, plan your own studies as you want to to do them in whatever schedule and and um, uh, in whatever schedule you, you want, because uh, in universities you have almost complete freedom to do whatever you want. Uh, some courses might require you to have completed other courses before, so you just have to make sure that you take them in uh, correct order. But no one is going to tell you that you need to do this right now. 
uh, while on the other hand at universities of applied sciences you might have to do certain courses at very certain times and it, the, it they might be pretty strict about them um so in addition in universities of applied sciences you actually have more uh mandatory uh you have more mandatory uh, classes where you actually have to be present uh, compared to universities again um what is it? Attendances, mandatory attendances in class. In of course, university courses do also have mandatory attendances, especially uh, with uh, seminar courses where you have a smaller group of people. They of of course want you to be there physically, and if you're not there for, if you're out uh, away from the class uh, for x amount of times, usually that's three times or more, then you will be kicked out of the class. However, that's less. Um, that's less frequent in universities compared to universities of applied sciences. Meaning that doing a part-time jobs uh, alongside your studies at a university of applied sciences is a bit harder than at universities because you have less flexibility with your schedules, daily schedules. So that is true. So Stefan saying here, I heard the schedule at UAS is, is very complicated, like eight hours a day for five days a week. That's not true. So that that's that's overkill. So you will have more a bit more flexibility than that. So that's it's not like a full time job and you can shift your schedule a bit. However, um, if you want to do a part time job along your, uh, alongside your studies at a University of Applied Sciences, you would most likely need to do like evening shifts or especially weekend shifts as a rule while for example when you're doing a university degree this is not an issue at all um, i actually worked full time uh, for two years alongside my studies and um, it was really tough I, I wasn't able to finish all of my courses because just the workload was too much but i hadn't mm -hmm. i had no problem with that attendance at university because i was able to f select courses that did not have mandatory attendance they ra rather they had a lot of uh, assignments that or de deliverables that basically uh, um, uh, how do you say what am i saying i'm saying uh, yeah so basically uh we had a lot of assignments that were sup or deliver deliverables that were substitutes to mandatory attendance so I was a able to work quite a quite a lot during my studies at a university when, when doing my university degree. But for example, my girlfriend has uh, done a degree at a University of Applied Sciences, and her schedule was actually was actually pretty strict. Sorry, long answer, ranting answer. Um, but yeah, definitely you can do jobs like cleaning supermarkets, restaurants, uh, clothing stores. It's absolutely. The only problem here is that. Um, of course, most of them will uh, want to assign you shifts and it might be a red flag for them if you just tell them that you cannot do anything else except not evening shifts and weekends. Uh, so just keep that, that in mind. Um, they might require you to do day shifts as well. Uh, so if you're not able to, then it might be a bit hard for you to get a job. Keep it in, just keep it in mind. What is up, Alexi? Welcome, welcome to the stream. Uh, Alexi actually has a really good point, saying that studying in Finnish universities is actually quite chill. They offer lots of flexibility to fit different types of li lifestyles. That is true, and uh, you ha always have to keep in mind that everything that I say depends on your 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 degree, the school that you're in, the courses that you take, etc. Uh, however, as a general rule of thumb, yes, universities of applied sciences are less flexible than universities. It doesn't mean that you have to sit in, in the class eight hours straight. However, uh, it means that you don't have as much academic freedom as you have in a, in a university. Cool. The next question comes from Arjun from India and uh, who is applying to Alt University Automation and Electric to Alt University specifically to study automation and electrical engineering next application period. And the uh, question is, can you explain the difference between joint application and separate application? Can uh, And can I use uh, joint applications if I want to you to apply for both Aalto and Tampere, Tampere University? Um, 
Arjun, a great question. Actually, now that you mentioned it, I was supposed to, supposed to post a video about this today. I have a video ready about this and it will come online next Tuesday and I will go into a lot of detail about this. However, if we just summarize uh, the differences between the joint application and separate application, again, keep in mind that this is very um, complicated. Uh, it's, it's a complicated topic, so I, I won't be able to get into a lot of detail. A summary. A joint application is an application system that you, you can use to apply up to six different degrees uh, and the degrees can be from the same school or from different schools. So yes, you can so use a joint application to apply to both Aalto University and Tampere University. Uh, but you can apply only to six schools at the same time, uh, six different degree programs at the same time. There are, um, <laughs> there are three different joint application periods per year, two of which uh, offer English taught university degrees. Uh, one is in the autumn, and the application period is in September, and the second uh, is uh, in the spring, which is in uh, January. Uh, in the autumn application, I have to check this just to make sure I got it, get this right. Uh, I have to check this just a moment, 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 moment. Mm. All right, so uh, I, I, I will actually read directly from my script for the video that is coming up next week. When you apply using a joint application, you, you can apply up to six different degree programs with the same application form. Uh, what is important to note is that when you apply to English taught degrees using the spring joint application, again, which is in January, you, ha you do not have to place the programs that you apply to in a order or order of preference. Uh, in addition, when you when you use the jo uh, spring joint application, you may be offered several places of study at the same time. However, because in Finland you can only accept one place of study uh, at, a, at a time, uh, if you are accepted to multiple degree programs with your joint application, you, you have to choose which place you wish to confirm. So you can only confirm one place. Uh, so this is a bit different if you apply in the autumn application period. So using the autumn joint application, which, which is already gone for this year. Because if when you apply in the autumn period using a joint application, you must place the degrees that you apply into in a order of, of preference. Uh, and you can only be offered one place. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, you can only be offered a, uh, a place in one degree program. So how this works is that you will be offered a place to which you have placed the highest, to which you have placed the highest in the priorities, and to which you have the highest points, right? So for example, if you don't have enough points to be admitted uh, to the program that you had as your first choice, you will be accepted to your second option. Again, this is the uh, autumn application, joint application. And um, uh, when you apply in the joint application in the autumn, again, if you are offered one place, then all of the other places that you apply to will be cancelled. So you, again, you can only be offered one place. Uh, the second way to apply in addition to these joint applications is a separate application system. And um, let's see. And uh, separate applications are basically separate application forms that you use to apply for each study program or to university separately. Um, so this means that if a program requires a separate application, you cannot apply there using a joint application. These are two different things. So for example, as, a, as, a, as an example, the applications that open up in December these are with separate. These are done with separate applications because the joint application period only starts in January. The ones that you apply into to into sept in um, during September are done with a separate application. Um, using a separate application can be done in many different ways, and the exact way to apply depends on each school. For example, one option is to send multiple separate applications individually for each program offered by the same university. 
However, another way is to send just one separate application that covers several programs offered by the same uni uh, university. So how many programs inside the same university you can apply to using one form depends on the university itself. Uh, also good to know that separate applications are filled either through the study info uh, study.fi service or through the university's own website. So basically this is this uh, this is ev everything summarized. So you have three different ways to apply joint application in the autumn, joint application in the spring or separate application. And again, I have a video that is ready to be published. It's going, going to come online next Tuesday about this exact topic and I will explain everything in, in, de in detail uh, just in time for the applications to... Uh, just in times for the applications. All right. Um, guys, at this point, uh, I would actually uh, like to say that if you are getting value out of this live stream, if you're getting uh, information that will help you guys uh, with the applications, do... Um, um, do me a favor and hit the like button. We're curr currently at 18 likes and it, it would be awesome to get up to 25 before the end of the stream. Uh, because that actually tells YouTube that you're getting some value out of this and they're going to bump the video a bit up in the uh, algorithm. And that would be awesome. The next question, meme review, comes from Amlam Sarkar who comes from Bangladesh and uh, is applying in the ap next application period to Lab University of Applied Sciences to study business. All right, thank you very much. We are actually in 20... Oh, yay! We, we're actually reach, already reached 25 likes. Awesome, guys. The next um, goal is going to be 35. Let's see if we can actually get there. I'm not sure if we have enough people online for that. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. Um, yeah, Yevgenia, I, I didn't even have time to look back at the stats and it's already there. <laughs> Thank you guys, I do appreciate it uh, a lot, honestly. Anyways, um, to the next question, uh, Amlan asks, I want to know the... Blah, blah, blah. Actually, just hold on a second, I'm gonna study business administration, do I get a job in Finland, is there a good scope for business? All right, so the question is, I want to know whether or not uh, I'm able to get a job in business administration after my degree in Finland. Are there good opportunities for business students for, for uh, getting a job? Yes, in general, studying a business degree uh, in Finland, you will have excellent career uh, opportunities. Uh, again, of course, as a disclaimer, you always have to keep in mind that it is always up to you personally whether or not you're going to get a job. Um, this, uh, your job is not tied in any way in just the fact that you have a degree. Uh, and actually, if you guys... Um, if you guys have not yet seen um, my recent interview with Saku Tihverainen, who is a very experienced uh, recruiter in Finland, uh, we actually spoke about this issue and I'm actually going to have uh, a second interview into this video series up on Thursday where I um, interview Steven Ter Horst, a Dutch uh, entrepreneur and a very highly experienced uh, HR professional. And uh, we speak about the fact that your degree will not guarantee you getting a job. Uh, I really highly recommend that you watch these interviews. They're pretty long, but they have a lot of really valuable insight that you actually can use when you apply for a job. And even before, there's also a lot of stuff that you need to know really a lot lot before you apply for your first jobs in Finland. So check this out. I will have new interviews coming up every sec every two weeks and uh, they're going to be super, super valuable. And um, so going back to the question, um, yes, you will have good career prospects if you graduate from uh, with a business degree. However, it is not a guarantee. Number one, you need to have good grades. So you need to do well in school. Number two, you need to uh, start accumulating work experience as early as possible, even during your studies. Number three, most importantly, you, you need to start networking on day one. In Finland, networks, uh, 
professional networks are extremely important in job hunting. And uh, there are PhD graduates in Finland who who cannot find a job because they have been sitting in the library for seven years, 24-7, without talking to anyone. And this is the biggest mistake that you can make in Finland. It's not about your GPA as much as about, for example, your ability to, ability to network and to build relationships. So seriously, guys, you need to start networking the second that you get into Finland. Actually, this is a really good start because we are already networking. I'm actually getting to know you guys, which is really, really cool. Um, but networks are so important, so freaking important when you when you want to apply for works in, uh, jo uh, jobs in Finland. I cannot overemphasize this. As an example, the way that I networked during my studies is that, of course, I, I you know, went in, into a lot of parties and I, I was really active in, in my student community. Uh, but in, in addition, I actually started helping people out with their different projects. Uh, projects I took part in different volunteer jobs. Um, I, I, I basically got myself into certain business-oriented communities within the business school. And partly because of that, during the last six... No, sorry. No, yeah. During the last six years... I have not. I haven't had to apply to a single job. I have not sent a single single job application uh, during the last six years, because every single job that I've gotten during the last six years has been through my network because someone has actually recommended me to that employer. And the only reason for that is that I've been networking since day one. And I've been trying to create value to other people. I haven't been asking. It's not. It's it's not that I ask for from them. Is that I give the, give give people value for free. I help other be people. I, I'm trying to be as helpful as possible. And when the time comes for for the other people to recommend f someone for a position or to to rec recommend them to apply for a job, they will then you know they will think about me. This is this is not something that I think about every single day. It's just something that you need to drill into your brain because it's such an important thing in Finland. Um, yeah, um, I don't know what else to say here. Networking is extremely, extremely important in Finland and, and you have to understand it before you come here. And I think that the, the uh, you're in a really good position because you're already network networking here. And because you're having a discussion with me, you know how Finns, Finns think. And uh, if you've been if you've been following Alexi himself, you know how how fi Finnish people think. And um, I think uh, that's a very good start. Awesome. We got into 35 likes. No, actually, we're th we're still in uh, officially in 34 for some reason. I don't know why uh, why it doesn't show 35 here. Um, Guys, awesome. That is really cool. Thank you so much. Um, Yevgenia is pushing everyone for 45 likes. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, Yevgenia also saying that I'm starting to think about the highest membership level. I, I don't know what to say. If you would were to actually do that, that would, that would mean everything to me. Um, you guys are basically the, the reason why I'm able to do this full time. And... Uh, um, it, it, the only reason that this whole channel exists is to help you guys with the school and then with the career development. So please let me know if you have any feedback, if you want me to, to actually improve this uh, channel, because I don't want to become stagnant, uh, uh, because then I will not be helping you and there's no point in, in keeping keep working on this. All right, um, let's jump into the next question after my long rant. Mm, let's see. All right. The next question comes from Christian, Christian, uh, Christian uh, from France. Viva la France! Mm, uh, Christian is applying the next ac application period. Uh, wants to do a bachelor's at Aalto University, and interested in economics. Awesome. And again, once again, remember that after your bachelor's, you would also do your master's there. Just keep in mind. 
The question is, hi Oliver, I was wondering if I get enrolled in the bachelor's program of economics at Aalto University, how hard is it to later get selected for the exchange program for one sem semester? Exchange from Aalto to another country. For instance, for instance, for instance, I looked at the partner universities and I would like to do my minor studies in Canada. So I would like to know how hard is it to go on exchange, how competitive it is. That is an excellent question. That is a super good question. Thank you for asking asking it. I will um, get back to your... Um, no, actually, sorry, there's uh, a bit more. I, would I was thinking about Canada because I would have an, uh, have an advantage since I'm fluent in both English and French. Uh, which are l teaching languages at the Canadian University of uh, University that you are interested in, but I was curious in your opinion. Super good question, um, uh, and uh, yeah, excellent. Aalto University has excellent exchange programs. They have a bunch of different universities that they they do exchanges with, uh, and how hard it is to get into a everyone who wants to do an exchange can actually get to do an exchange there's enough spots for everyone basically every year however some some universities in some countries are more competitive th than others and uh the the uh for example um canada canada uh i think um california australia and then maybe Switzerland, I think some of these, uh, at least, okay, let's say this, Canada, California, and Australia, I think were the most popular places to go to uh, when I applied for my exchange. Then, for example, for example, New Zealand was very hard to get in, in, in as well. And this is all measured by your GPA. So if you want to go to, if you want to be able to select your university where you do your exchange in, and yes, you can, as a part of your degree, you can include an exchange program there and it's uh, depending uh, on the school it's usually from five, four to six months so it's not a full year uh, it's one semester basically um, so depending on how the popu how popular the university is and how many spots they actually have for all the university students that is going to uh, that um, that is going to to um, the more popular the more difficult it is to get in I don't know what's what's with me today um, and for example for me I wanted to, to go to New Zealand but the problem was that it wasn't that um, uh, popular at the time however they only had like two spots in the entire country for uh, Alto University students one in uh, Christchurch and then one, one in Auckland and uh, um, I applied to Auckland but I didn't get in a friend of mine got there I'm super jealous and uh, then I got into Germany because that wasn't uh, there were were multiple spots and it wasn't so popular. Uh, and and what is good to know is that um, Canada is super highly requested because everyone loves to go to Canada. It's it's an awesome pe awesome place. And uh, you have to take into account that people usually from Finland they don't usually apply for exchange studies based on what is the best university, but the people usually apply to exchange based on what what is the best place to party in and what is the best best place to travel in uh, so for example everyone wants to go to australia because it's super expensive to go there normally and everyone wants to have a opportunity to live in sydney for half a year uh, for super cheap uh, so <laughs> so this is usually the the reason why people apply to these kind of exotic places so yeah to answer your question directly uh, your English language skills don't necessarily directly apply here. Uh, you have to prove your proficiency in English, and if the official lang teaching language in the university is also French, then it might help you. Not necessarily, but it might. Um, but it's usually measured with based on on your um, weighted GPA, so not the direct uh, straight GPA, but your weighted GPA. So basically, uh, uh, your the number of credits per course is also taken into account your GPA. There's a formula on the Alta University website that you can use to ca calculate your weighted GPA. Uh, it's pretty easy if you have Excel. Uh, so if you want to do an exchange in a popular place, then focus on your GPA for the first couple of years. There. Long uh, rant, long... Um, uh, uh, rant about the, uh, the, the, the the topic yeah Alex is saying that ne Finnish people are bad at socializing 
but then networking in Finland is important. Challenge accepted. <laughs> that is kind of true. Uh, usually people are pretty good at networking like professionally, but then the, the kind of the private socializing part is a bit awkward sometimes. But yeah, that's true. It's not easy. And uh, especially if you come from a country that is more social, more direct than Finland, uh, then networking professionally might be a bit, bit of a challenge because we don't usually like to be too direct with business. Um, so again, watch the interview that I have coming up uh, next Thursday with Steven Der Host. It's going to be very good. Uh, a lot of really good insights for you about this topic. Uh, Yevgeny is saying, can I not get a, into an exchange program? It is highly unlikely that you don't get into an exchange program if you if you don't really care what country you want to go into. But if you do a full degree in Finland, then you can uh, include a deg exchange program into your degree. Uh, at least, again, there might be some exceptions, but uh, in at least most university degrees, they have an exchange that you can uh, uh, include. All right. Uh, as a note, of course, uh, with the, the current current COVID situation, of course, exchange programs are cancelled, most of them at least. So to, you have to take that into account uh, if the situation doesn't get, for example, better next year or in two years, which it hopefully does. All right. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. Next question comes from Topoyo. Hey, awesome to have you here as well. I didn't see you in the chats. Anyways, awesome, awesome to have you here as well. Welcome back to the live stream. Um, Topoyo's uh, uh, question is: Hi, Oliver. Which universities in Finland offer a bachelor's degree in accounting? Basically, any uh, any business school, any any university that has a business, uh, a faculty of business. Um, again, this is not entirely true. Um, but most of them. So, okay, no, actually, scratch that. I'm sorry. So, depending, um, yeah, scratch that uh, because we are talking about English taught degrees. Mm, I don't remember out of the top of my head right now. Um, let's see. Do keep in mind that uh, if you want to study accounting, um, you don't necessarily have to do your bachelor's in accounting, especially if the school doesn't offer a bachelor's degree in accounting. Uh, for example, uh, the bachelor Alta University doesn't have an accounting bachelor's in English. They have a bachelor's program in, in economics and international business. But then again, you can al always change your major into accounting uh, in your master's. So I would not worry, be, um, be worried about it. Uh, just do your bachelor's in whatever is available and, and then change your uh, major into the into your master's. Or you can always, if you want to, for example, if you want to do a bachelor's in economics, you can always minor in accounting. And then you can, for example, do a master's uh, in, in, in accounting as well. So there's multiple options here. So, so uh, I would not be worried about it at all. Uh, again, if you want to do a, ba a degree in business, economics is awesome. Um, international business is awesome as well. Just minor in accounting or finance or whatever you want to do. And then if you want to change the, uh, your field to master's, there you go. Evgenia saying, I'm awful at adver advertising myself. I'm used to be used to helping people just like that. So networking with French, uh, friendships is perfect for me. Volunteering, networking also, but the professional networking is a disaster. That is something that you need to practice. You have to remember that everyone sucks at professional networking at first, um, uh, especially if you are not like business oriented. Uh, you're going to learn it, but you need to have you. You need to kind of force it. Uh, it might feel that it's you have to force it at first, but it's going to come. You just need to s start, you know, networking. And networking is in a, as a term as a dif you know term. I think has too many stigmas up around it because f people think that networking is just like for this business people and they you know ugh. Uh, it, it, it's like, ugh. no one likes to network and people like to make friends but networking is for business people networking is basically just getting to know people uh, on a personal level nothing more so 
networking can mean anything going into parties and and shaking someone's hand and telling telling uh, introducing yourself networking can be about inviting someone uh, to your place for a dinner or going to a dinner at a restaurant or networking can be uh meeting someone in a professional uh, you know um uh, uh um context it it means a lot of things i i think people overthink the word networking too much and that's why it's it becomes a bit of a barrier for many people i wouldn't worry about it at all just be open open about just you know getting to know people that's that's everything uh, and thinking about like professional networking actually one one good point the one of the best ways to network professionally is basically getting to know people around your hobbies and around the things that you're interested in so again if for example if you're interested in uh, web development get to know the 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 group groups of people who are interested in web development or whatever you want to do that doesn't have to be like forced professional networking it just simply means that you get to know people around the subject that you're interested in that's networking all right next question comes from Khalil from Algeria and um and the question is do you think that business information technology is a good major to study in Finland uh, and for getting a decent job after graduation and uh, okay cool good question I already answered this similar question last week, so I'm going to repeat my my own words. Your specific major, so bear with me. <laughs> Business information technology is not necessarily uh, you have you have to think about this as your fields uh, you have to think about your degrees as a field and as a major or a speci specialization so for example when you do a degree in a business information technology that that's basically half business half technology business information technology is the major it's the name of the major program that you are going to do however that in, that in itself doesn't tell anything about your the structure of your studies necessarily because again in Finland in your at university level you have a lot of freedom on structuring your degree however you like so for example if you do a degree in economics you don't necessarily study just economics throughout your degree you might study accounting finance languages management consulting it, it can be a very big mix of you know stuff usually majors mean that you have certain mandatory courses that you have to take and then you can then structure the rest of your major or, or your degree however you want again as an example my major in my masters was entrepreneurship and innovation management that doesn't mean a thing it doesn't mean anything no one knows what eim is no one no employee employees are going to tell me that eim is good or bad because they don't know that that kind of a degree is a, actually it, it even exists it's just a name what i actually studied under that degree i studied management management consultancy strategy uh, sustainable business and for example sustainable uh, um, uh, you know sustainable business strategies I could have also been able to specialize in entrepreneurial finance under the same program, but I could also have uh, done more like consultancy work or uh, courses. And depending on what courses I actually take under that major, the the degree is going to be completely different. So it's not about the actual name of the degree that or major that you do. You can do a degree in uh, you can do a major in uh, finance. But half of your courses are about are basically accounting. So it is impossible for me to tell anyone that like business information technology or SIM or EIM or <coughs> whatever the abbreviations are, are, whether or not they're good. Basically here, you are going to do a degree in business. You're going to do a master's in business. And from the perspective of if you look at at this question from the perspective is a 
business master's in business good and will you get good job opportunities after you graduate as a master's in business whatever your major is then the answer is yes you will have very good job uh, opportunities and career prospects the same goes to for example computer sciences if you study computer sciences cs that doesn't tell you anything because you can specialize in a gazillion different things you can do cloud computing game game development uh, game engine development, you can do web development, you can do back-end, front-end, uh, you can do uh, uh, embedded uh, systems, you can you can actually mix in electrical engineering and then computer sciences, you can do automation, you can do AI. There's a billion things that you, you can study under those degrees. So it will not, just having like uh, abbreviation, it will not tell you anything about the career opportunities. And then one more, one, once more, I've, I've mentioned this, I think, like 10, 10 times during this stream already. Even if you have the best deg degree from the best university in the world, let's say that you're a business graduate from the university, uh, from Harvard University. It will not guarantee that you will get a good job if you are a dumbass and you don't know what you're doing. It's always up to you personally, your ability to learn, your ability to network, your ability to actually look for a job. No one is going to hand you a job automatically because you have a degree from a fancy university. Again, Steven Der Horst, uh, the, the Dutch entrepreneur who I interviewed and uh, whose interview I'm going to post next Thursday, spoke a lot about the fact that the, a degree from fancy university doesn't give you any... Uh, um, guarantees that you will get a nice job it's always up to the person so all right all right all right all right um the next one comes from well yeah if, if you are a dumbass it <laughs> no one likes to no one likes to work with with bad people or I don't want to say stupid people because that's not true, but if if you are someone who just simply is is a douche bag and no one likes you, then it's hard for uh, to for you to get actually a job. So, uh. all right. Anyways, the next question comes from Denise, and the question is: I looked at the website of ten universities in Finland because I want to study teaching, and five of them have a bachelor's degree. Can this change when I apply next year? Uh, so can I have a bachelor's degree? So can a bachelor's degree come to universities without a bachelor's degree? All right, I didn't really get what you meant with the second question. Um, so yeah, uh, if you <coughs> if you looked at the websites of the universities right now, it is highly likely that it is not going to change uh, before the application period starts either in December or in January because that would be dumb. However, it is likely that some of the deg degrees uh, degrees might change uh, change before next year, so meaning 2021 autumn uh, and uh, 2022 January uh, spring application. So yeah, the degrees change e each, uh, each year at least slightly. Uh, however, you whatever the degrees are to, um, this year, it's a, it's a good benchmark that they will most likely have at least similar ones next year as well. So, um, yeah. Um, I would definitely keep an eye out for the same universities that you already checked, the fi five universities, and just make sure to check them every, every, every couple of months and make sure that they still have the degrees <coughs> and what the requirements are, because it is most likely that, that the requirements change instead of the degrees changing. Uh, at least to my in my experience um yeah i hope that that, that answered answered your question hey natalie thank you so much natalie moreno uh gave a five dollar super chat that that is very much appreciated thank you so much that is going to go, going to go into my uh, espresso fund thank you so much uh, I w that will keep me awake um natalie saying i'd uh, um i've i've liked I would have liked to know about studying in Finland before. I already did my master's in Korea, so now it's late. How to go on vacation one day at least? Oh, totally, Natalie. Uh, absolutely, you should um, you should uh, plan a vacation to Finland after 
we get rid of this current situation it's it's awesome um especially of course depending on whether or not you have been already been uh up north that much but for example the the finnish lapland is awesome during uh uh early spring so may basically meaning january february march it's it's just awesome helsinki is the, uh, as it, at it, its best in uh, mid uh, summer uh, especially when people are on their summer holidays because it's not that busy and then uh, the restaurants are still going to be open and helsinki is just a lovely summer summer city i i love it uh, another place i really recommend that you check out in finland if you come here during the summer is hango Hanko is basically basically like the Riviera of Finland, and it's in the uh, it's in the south uh, west tip of Finland, and it's actually the southernmost tip of Finland as well. So that's uh, also awesome. Uh, Natalie, if you, if you want to know anything else about Finland or, for example, recommendations for destinations, just let me know. I, I highly appreciate this super chat. All right, guys, we are seven likes short for from 45 it would be awesome if we actually got there during the stream but anyways the next question comes from jet Koti, again from india uh, and uh, who is applying in the next application period uh, to other university uh, to study economics awesome that is awesome 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 and the question is when does the next app next application period for bachelors in economics in alto start and do they accept you on your sat scores great questions um <clears throat> I don't remember out of the top of my head, but let's check it out right now. So uh, what I do usually, I just Google Alto University Bachelors in English. That's the way that you get uh, there easiest. Check out this alto.fi website, application period for bachelor's programs in English. That's the correct page for you. And then go a bit downward and you get bachelor's program in economics. So this is the correct, correct one for you. More information and um excuse me and then you have uh, the application period here 7th of january uh, from 7th to 20th of january 2021 so that is going to be done using the joint application that i spoke about like half, half an hour ago so in january is going to be the next application period and then search for how to apply here and you will get the application requirements Mm. and um, just a moment yeah so you're going to be in admission group 2 because you're not a Finnish national and in admission group 2 admission is based on SAT test results and here you have the minimum score for SAT test you have to do evidence-based reading and writing and the mathematics sections uh, that is not being translated correctly it should be and that is yeah, it, which is uh, and in Finnish. Uh, in Finnish, uh, so the minimum score is uh, 12, um, 1,200. However, please take into account that this is the minimum score that the last person got into the program last year. So the min minimum score that the last person got in last year. So you need to uh, aim for a score much higher than twelve hundred if you want to make sure that you get in. And if you want to get a, a scholarship, you have to ha aim even higher because only the best applicants actually are uh, admitted. So this is not your goal. Your goal is higher, much, much, much higher. So uh, Shannon, super quickly answered your question. Yes, doctorate degrees are free in Finland. PhD positions are, I'm sorry, PhD studies are, in, um, are free in Finland. Actually, they are paid positions, so you get paid for studying a PhD. So um, they're separate from bachelor's and master's. Stefan saying, I heard if, uh, that in Finland, if you get a doctorate, you literally get a sword. Yeah, that's actually true. I don't remember what is the sword about. You get a fancy hat and then you get... Um, um, let's actually see. This is because this, this is really funny. Um, so, so yeah, doctoral hat and sword. And... Um, Doctoral sword. 
The sword used in the Conferment Act in the, in the of, is the officially certified civilian sword of the Independent Republic of Finland. It comes with a scabbard, a black and golden scabbard holder, and a golden emblem of the university. Blah, blah, blah. Female doctors should also have a sword. Da, da, da. Doctoral swords from our partners. <laughs> so you can literally order a sword for 240 euros plus VAT. Um, if you get a doctorate, I guess. So you get a fancy hat if you if you become a doctor and then you get a sword. S sword, let's see. Blah, blah, blah. Let's see. Mm. I don't... I'm not sure why, uh, who is allowed to order a sword. Uh, is it all doctorates, doctors, or is it just some doctors? I'm I'm not sure. Uh, anyways, yeah, but yeah, you you will get a sword. So <laughs> that's actually really funny. So if you don't find motivation to do your PhD, then maybe this is the motivation. This is motivation enough, so you can basically, you know, play with your sword. <laughs> That's. Think about how cool that would actually be if you had like, if if I for example uh, you know had a uh, had for example a YouTube studio at some point and I would have my diploma on the wall, and then I would actually have a sword on the wall as well. That would be darn cool. And it, anyway, uh, let's get back into the into to the questions. Um, the next one comes from Arjun. And the question is, should we submit a scholarship letter when applying for Aalto University scholarship as Tampere University needs a letter of scholarship? Can I combine both motivation letter and scholarship scholarship letter? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I don't think that Aalto University applications require any kind of a scholarship letters. They basically, you just have to check the box in, in the, when you apply for the university. So when you, when you use the, I'm sorry, when you fill out the application form for the university itself, there is going to be a check box, box saying that, like that, I want to apply for a scholarship as well. Uh, depends on the university where the where you need to check the box or uh, if you need to send a separate application for it. But normally, when you apply for Finnish universities, there is no separate like application form for scholarship. You need to just check a box somewhere when you use the application when you just fill out the normal application form. So I I haven't heard that you need to, to send a motivation. I'm sorry, a scholarship letter to other university. Please make sure to check this out before you apply. Uh, make sure to go go through the requir application requirements extremely um, uh, carefully and, and check that you actually have everything done. Uh, the thing, uh, so th your second question, can I combine both the motivation letter and scholarship letter? If these are asked for from you separately, then I would not mix them just to, to make sure. Uh, that you don't, uh, um, because if you mix them, then then it might be that the, the purpose of the letter basically kind of um, is thrown out of the window. Uh, second, if, uh, for example, Aldo University doesn't require you to send a scholarship letter, then I would not refer to that in your motivation letter at all. Uh, so you basically need a motivation letter separately for Aldo, anyways. All right, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. The next question comes from Aaron, again from Kurdistan, um, who has not yet decided whether or not he wants to study in Finland. You still haven't. Aaron, we've been doing these live streams for a long time. You need to decide. R hopefully you need, want to actually come here. Um, anyways, <laughs> the question is, I remember last time you said something about having a watch company with your friend. Can you talk more about it and can you please show uh, us some of the models? Uh, yeah, that's actually a really cool question. So unfortunately, I cannot show you any pictures of the models because um, we don't, uh, our current, our website is being updated. Uh, we really ne never had a really good website for the, for the, the company. So for the, uh, anyone who doesn't know, I basically... Six years ago, we founded a company with a couple of friends from school. Um, basically, our idea was to start manufacturing handmade watches. So 
the, the watches that I have here, these are from Arni. These are the, the one of the sponsors of the channel. By the way, if you want to get yourself a wooden wooden watch made from Finnish wood, check out Arni uh, watches from the link through the description box below. I have a discount code there for 10% if you want to get yourself a, a watch or a, for example, a, a genuine leather wallet from Arni. Arni. Anyhow, so, so this, is, this has nothing to do with our watch company. So basically, uh, one of my best friends is actually a watchmaker, a watchsmith. He actually went to school for watchmaking. And um, we founded a company with three business school friends and two friends from the school of watchmaking. And um, our idea was to make this uh, super Finnish, simp simple design, handmade watch that is made 100% from Finnish made materials. And um, actually, I think I could just show you one, one or two pictures. Let's see. I need to check if I have anything here. Just a moment. Mm. Yeah, sure. Actually, um, I will show you pictures just a, just a second. All right. Um, un momento. So yeah. So ba our idea was basically to create a fully finished watch that is like handmade from scratch. So we basically have our our two watchmaking friends who designed this super simplistic uh, watch that again all the materials are handmade. Uh, the materials are very natural, and uh, we ma came up with this simple design that I could share with you right now, right here. So the company is called Ilmar Watches. Uh, we, again, we, our website is not online currently, but um, so the the watch case itself, the the steel that you can you can actually see here, this is actually Damascus steel. So um, you might have seen a couple of YouTubers who are uh, smiths who actually create this kind of Damascus steel. So how you make this is that you stack different steels materials uh, on top of each other, and then you uh, forge them together and then you fold them multiple times over and you get this very beautiful natural um, uh, looking uh, grain and it's beautiful as hell and then we have a, a wooden watch face that is uh, made out of Finnish wood this is all handmade so the wood is hand cut uh, hand sawn uh, cut and, and made from scratch the steel is actually handmade from scratch by a a uh, knife smith smith uh, from Finland, and then we have this reindeer leather watch strap that is again handmade from scratch. Uh, it's not machine uh, made at all in any any set. All the for example the uh, the knitting everything is done by hand from scratch. The same thing, the buckle for the watch, is, this is also ha completely handmade. So from scratch, again, the material is done by hand. It's actually forged by hand. And then the form, form is actually made, in, made by hand. And this is actually a picture of our first prototype. So this is actually not completely finished. So you can, there's uh, some small inconsistencies here. Um, but these actually retail for... So actually the retail price for these is 5,500 5, euros. Um, uh, in Finland pl plus shipping so uh, so 5,500 euros per watch and uh, to be honest we actually don't make that much money out of them uh, we barely cover our costs because the, the hand manufacturing is so incredi incredibly expensive in, here in Finland uh, but yeah this is actually what we've, we've been doing for six years we've uh, whoops oh sorry guys just a moment All right, sorry guys, my battery died. So yeah, so this is what we've been working for the last six years where we've actually sold a couple of these and uh, we make them um, 
based on order so we don't um, mass manufacture them at all just just if someone is interested we will make make them and the manufacturing takes from three months to five months to actually finish yeah thank you Yevgenia for the the, uh, the lovely feedback it's it's uh, we're we're pretty proud of it it's it's not for everyone but um I, I think that it's pretty cool yeah so that's uh yeah so Aaron thanks for asking that's uh what we the um, uh, model that we've made and uh, I don't recommend ma manufacturing handmade watches it's it's freaking difficult it's it's taking years for us to actually make this to happen make this re a reality anyways the next question comes from if we get back in in track uh next question comes from wahid and uh the question is my university said that i will sit on most mm. my university said that i will have to do a mandatory entrance exam but i have no idea about this exam and i don't know what type of questions will come in the exam mm, which pattern should i follow or, or can you help me please and I uh, do I can I access the entrance exams materials from anywhere and this is specifically for Tomp University of Applied Sciences uh, mm, guys I see that there's some harsh discussion going in the chat let's keep the the chat clean um remember that this is a multicultural channel so i i would love if you got guys could actually try to keep keep the chat clean so that i don't have to start kicking anyone out uh i would really highly appreciate it um again we don't really tolerate uh for example racism or sexism at, at all uh, or any other ki kind of um uh um discrimination in in the channel i i really don't like it because uh i i really want to keep this diverse and um and multicultural so let's keep it clean um anyways uh then yeah so so wahid was asking about the entrance exam for tom university of applied sciences so unfortunately i don't know anything about the entr entrance exam um, some of the universities or universities of applied sciences uh, that have entrance exams for English taught degrees, they post their prior exams on the web. Uh, if they don't, then there's no way for you to access the earlier questions. Um, unfortunately, I cannot help you here because I have no idea what the exam is going to be like. Um, most of the times the materials are published a bit before the exam and um, you just have to do your best. Um, many of the exa entrance exams are aptitude exams, so they're not that heavy heavy on substance, uh, and they they just need to make sure that you are fit for that program. So unfortunately, yeah, I don't have any more information on on the topic. All right, guys, Aaron. Denise, let's cut it out. I, I really, really wish uh, that we can actually keep the um, keep the chat clean and and the discuss discussion constructive as possible. Uh, there's no point in in going, for example, into personal matters. I haven't been following the chat for a while, but uh, again, I, I really don't want want to start going through the chat and and for example, banning anyone if there's anything anything uh, unnecessary happening. Uh, yeah. Anyhow, um, the next question comes from Maha Mahashri uh, from India, uh, who is interested, uh, who is already studying in Finland Al uh, in Alta University School of Elect Electrical Engineering. Awesome. And uh, specializing in electronics and nanotechnology. That is awesome. Uh, thanks, guys. That I would really appreciate it. Um, nanotechnology sounds really, really cool. And that's actually a very uh, quickly growing um field in finland for example and, and of course around the world um and the question is are high gpas mandatory to find jobs in the field of studies in finland or other factors um can help to stand are there other factors than, that can help you to stand out in job applications good questions so um Maha, uh, mahashri 
Mahashri, if you're still uh, online, uh, live, please let me know in the chat uh, so that I know that I'm actually addressing you live uh, because these are very good questions and I, I really want you to get them. So high GPAs are always uh, uh, appreciated, especially in the engineering field, which is more, uh, more uh, um, I would say, traditional than, for example, uh, like marketing or so, uh, some other business fields. So yeah, in engineering, high GPAs are always appreciated, but it should not be the only priority in the, during your studies. Again, as I mentioned, uh, like a half an hour ago, 45 minutes ago, you need to start networking right away. I know that th this is currently very difficult because of the COVID, si COVID situation and the fact that you are not able to be on the campus. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, Stefan, yeah, yes, I'm a, a born Finn. Um, the problem is that um, having a really high GPA will not help you get a job on if you have not been able to network and build your professional network and, and do something else with your time alongside your studies. This is one of the reasons why volunteering in student organizations, especially in, in Aalto, is so popular because that is an excellent way to not only to network but to also, also learn like ha highly valued real life skills. But it also shows employer employers that you're uh, willing to do something, that you're willing to actually put your time into uh, for someone else. Because usually when you're volunteering, you're organizing events or uh, uh, activities for someone else. And that is actually a positive signal for employers because then they know that you're not only about progressing, uh, 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 improving your own situation, right? Uh, so basically, this is kind of the logic here. So if you volunteer, that that shows that you are able to think about someone else except yourself. So so I would say that when the uh, situation with COVID goes away, start actually org um, volunteering in different student organizations. It, it doesn't have to be like just like parties. You could, for example, look at the uh, uh, the Guild of Electrical Engineering uh, and may maybe, for example, volunteer there. Uh, you could apply for the board at the Guild of Electrical Engineering. Uh, if there is any hobbies that you, for example, sports or other hobbies that you like, look up a, if there's any clubs in those in that hobby in, in at Alta, and uh, start being active in that organization as well. Uh, in addition, I would recommend that you start activating in networking. So meaning that start going into different career events. Uh, not only the ones organized by Aalto University, but uh, especially the ones organized by the uh, student organization. So especially the like excursions to the co uh, corporate offices or uh, different uh, companies, um, go to uh, dinner parties, go to a a anything that you can basically come up with. So yes, GPA, high GPA is always good for you, but it's not going to be, be good for you if, if there's nothing else that you have done with your time. Again, I have a pretty pretty darn high GPA from my master's. I have a, very, I have a completely uh, average GPA from my bachelor's. But the reason that I have not had to apply for a single job uh, during the last six, year, six years is that I have been recommended to my jobs to my last jobs and that the reason for that is that i've been extremely active in the, in the local student community and i be and i've been extremely active um active in in uh volunteering in in different things so again volunteering shows that you're willing to give your time to someone else for free and that is a positive signal uh, for example if i if i were to um, if I were to, to recruit someone to our startup, I would be actually looking what kind of volunteering jobs they have, have been doing on top of their school. So, yeah. Um, then actually, before I, I move on, then of course, if you have done any kind of part-time work during your studies, it doesn't matter if it's like summer jobs, internships, uh, it could be part-time jobs, it, maybe, uh, it could be in the service sector, uh, like restaurants, uh, bars, clothing stores, as clerk, um, all of that helps. Ev everything helps. It doesn't necessarily have to be your uh, jobs in your field. But of course, if you're able to get a part-time job in your field during your studies, that is going to be really big, really, really helpful for you. And then one more thing, like fourth thing that is going to help you set up, set yourself apart is your hobbies, personal hobbies. Are you actually doing like electronics uh, during your studies? 
uh, do you like to fiddle fiddle with like um, uh, printed circuit boards during your studies, or is there something that you do uh, in your free time? Um, and actually, talking about that, uh, Maharshi, would you like to say? Uh, Maharshi actually sent me a DM on Discord. No, actually, send, can can you please send a message on the just right in the chat? What year are you in in your studies at Aalto? I, I'm really interested in to in uh, to learn because I actually might have something for you depending on on your background. So just let me know in the in the in the chat, and uh, we might need to discuss this a bit further. For example, in the Discord chat server uh, later. Yeah, so just ping me, ping me in the chat, and let me know in which year are you currently, and um, then uh, from there. Yevgeny asking, is learning languages a good hobby? Oh, definitely. Yeah, why not? Absolutely. For example, uh, in our startup, uh, we are currently looking at a a candidate for a position who knows four languages fluently and and studies a fifth language. That's definitely a benefit. I am super interested in, in that kind of thing. All right, so you're in your second uh, year. Cool. Actually, send me a send me a message DM on uh, on Discord. Again, it might take me a while for you uh, for me to answer you, but um, just send me a message there. I would really love to discuss um, your studies because I I, I I have a thing. So again, if you're not a member of the uh, server, there's a link to the Discord server in the description box below. All right, uh, this is a really good time to stop for a second. Get a drink. And just mention that guys, I would highly appreciate if uh, you're getting value out of these live streams and the different videos that I'm putting out on the channel. If you were interested in considering becoming a member, uh, a channel member. So basically what that means is that you will have under the videos that you watch or um, uh, on the channel page here, you will have a button uh, that says join. If you, if, you, if you click the join button, you will actually see the different channel membership levels that I have currently on the channel. There's currently four different membership levels. Fuxi, which means freshman, Gandhi, which means undergrad student, Ma Ma Meisteri, which is grad student, and then Tohtori, PhD or postdoc. These are basically the Finnish terms or slang terms for each of these uh, degree levels. It, you don't have to be a master's student to become a master. But if you would like to directly impact and actually uh, contribute into the channel and what I do here, I would really appreciate if you consider joining as a member. Each of these levels have different perks uh, uh, with them. And uh, um, for example, if you are a uh, master grad student, you will get access to an exclusive Discord channel. Uh, so the larger the channel grows, the less time I have for each person on the ch uh, on the server, but I will keep this Discord uh, exclusive Discord channel small because it's uh, for grad students, and uh, I will have more personal time for those people who are members there. And uh, again, I would appreciate a lot if you considered joining. That would mean everything to me because you guys basic basically make this possible for me to. Uh, do YouTube as a full-time job, and I, I appreciate you guys so much. All right, next question comes from Hiba Kagi, and there's a couple of them. Uh, but actually, Hiba Kagi comes from Tunisia, and uh, she's applying in the ne next application period, and would like to apply to University of Helsinki. And uh, as a background, I've studied Anglo-American civilization, linguistics, and literature as a first bachelor in Tunisia. That's really cool. Uh, super interesting topics. And I'm currently studying public administration in France as a set second bachelor's. Actually, I do remember uh, you told about this, I think, last week. So, a couple of questions. The first one, the French system allows me to skip the first year and start my second bachelor's as a second year Student, since I don't feel the requirements to enroll in masters at Hel uh, Helsinki, Helsinki University, 
Um, if I won't finish my second bachelor's in France, is it possible to enroll in Finnish bachelor as a sec second year student like in France? Unfortunately not. So no, this uh, at least as long as... Hey, to study for future. Thank you so much for becoming a channel member. Uh, as a Fuxi freshman, welcome to the road to finish. I appreciate you so much. Uh, there, um, if you actually go to the uh, YouTube channel there and you go into the community tab, you will actually see uh, a couple of posts there. I will actually start posting behind the scenes videos about my life here in Helsinki there every single week. And um, uh, you will actually get uh, exclusive access to a lot of behind the scenes videos. And for example, um, I will start doing as well um, uh, other type of content there as well. Uh, so thank you so much. I really appreciate it. That is awesome to get you on board. I, I love you for that. Um, yeah, so uh, back to the question. Unfortunately, if you apply to study in Finland um, uh, to, to do a bachelor's, unfortunately, you cannot skip a year. Um, some universities allow you to transfer some of the credits from uh, uh, previous degrees uh, to Finland, uh, with meaning that you can skip a few courses, but this usually only applies from Finnish universities to Finnish universities. So even though, f of course, France is in Europe, the systems are pretty similar, they're still f f enough far apart that I'm not quite sure if this is going to work for you. So it is pretty likely, I would guess, that you're not able to skip a year. However, you have to take into account that even if you have to start from the from the first year, the first year classes are most likely going to be really easy for you because they're basics. So you're going to fly through the first year. Uh, of course, you have to do the courses anyways, but you're going to have qu quite a lot of benefits because you already have quite a lot of experience in school. And uh, this will also mean that because they're easier for you, because you already know the basics, you're, you're a, it's much easier for you to uh, keep up a high GPA, which is, of course, going to serve you a lot later. <coughs> Again, uh, to study for future once more, uh, thank you so much for becoming a channel member. Remember, uh, of course, your the channel member questions are always prioritized both in the chat and in the form. So if you have any questions, just give uh, uh, put them in the chat. I can see your name highlighted there. So uh, uh, let's let's keep this up. The second question from uh, Hibakaki was: If not, um, let's see. So, sorry, if not, what are we applying for a second person? Would applying for a second bachelor's reduce my chances of obtaining a visa? A residence permit and are there any scholarships for international students applying for a bachelor's yeah definitely so uh, no so sorry first of all no uh, applying for a second batch bachelor's degree will not reduce your chances of getting a residence permit it ha doesn't have any impact on that at, at all you will basically get a residence permit in finland if you are admitted to study in finland in a finnish university unless you have a, like a really really hefty criminal record behind you um so no the fact that you have already a degree behind you doesn't impact your chances of getting a residence permit at all, especially if you apply for a stu student residence permit. So keep that in mind. Uh, and uh, yes, there are scholarships for international students applying for bachelors as well. Every single university degree, bachelors and masters that is taught in English in Finland has scholarship options uh, available what kind of scholarships how many of them there are and how hard they're to get depends on the school just a second mm. and then the third question was do you recommend any finnish agencies that would help with the paperwork uh yeah no unfortunately i do not know any of the any agencies that you could actually help you with this uh, normally, uh, for example, Finnish students apply on their own. Uh, of course, their parents might help you a bit, but I don't know any consultancies that would actually help you with the paperwork. Uh, for example, if you think about like the applications to the university and applications for the residence permit, they're not difficult. So I would not pay money for anyone to fill, the, fill them for you, to be honest. Uh, I would not. Mm. 
But yeah, I hope that this uh, answered your questions. Um, Yavgenia saying, I studied five languages, but I had enough time for... I had only enough time for three. And now I'm studying Finnish and I love it. It's so full of... It's so full of energy. <laughs> I really recommend that you start watching Finnish TV because it's 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 a really good way to, to learn. Um, I would not maybe agree that Finnish uh, language has that much energy, but hey, this is a... Um, I guess that is uh, up for uh, interpretation. Yevgeny is saying, I signed up for Finnish classes from January at some open university. Hey, that's actually a really good idea. That's actually really, really, a really good idea. I definitely recommend anyone to do that as well. Uh, they should not be too expensive, the courses, and, and they should be very, very high uh, quality. Yevgeny, how much do you actually pay for the courses? Is it like 30 euros per course or something like this? Maybe 20 or... Up, up to 50 euros maybe not not more expensive should it shouldn't be that that expensive and yeah Ule Arena um, if anyone is interested Ule Arena is a is a broad uh, is the web service of the Finnish national broadcasting service so Ule Arena uh, Y L E uh, Arena uh, and they have Finnish TV shows there that you can watch for free free uh, and it's a great way to learn Finnish to study for future saying since my native tongue is already an ag uh, anglo native language turkish i don't think it would be would be that hard uh to learn finnish as it would be uh, for a native english french speaker oh definitely yeah turkish is actually pretty close to finnish in in certain terms so yeah i i i know personally a couple of turkish people who do speak really good finnish and they for mm. them the pronunciation is actually pretty easy to learn Uh, the grammar is also uh, something that they have to really work on. But, uh, for example, my girlfriend's uh, brother's wife is Turkish. And she's learned really a lot during the last couple of years when she um, after they got married. So, oh, definitely it's possible. All right. Yevgeny actually saying that some open university courses are free of charge. That is cool. Yep, uh, actually, Evgenia, would you like to link the Open University website to everyone so people can actually check that out? Because I might actually do an update on my, um, on my, on my, on my free tools to learn Finnish, and that would actually be a really good resource for it. Anyways, next question comes from Bajak Denis. So Denis, basically. Uh, by the way, is it Bajak or Bazak? I think the S is a bit more pronounced is it bashak 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 um i don't know how to how to correctly pronounce the turkish uh, turkish s um anyways uh denis is asking does uas require sats i didn't see that kind of requirement in the school page other than their own examination yeah good question so um there is no general rule on whether or not universities of applied sciences require sats If they do not list SATs as a requirement in the application requirements, that means that they do not require you to do SATs. They would have them clearly say that you need to um, <laughs> that you need to uh, do your SATs. So if if it doesn't say that you need them, then you don't need them. Pretty simple. Shannon has the next question uh, from the U.S. and um, again, uh, Shannon has not yet decided whether or not she wants to study in Finland, but still working on whether or not uh, or which school would be good for marketing or international business and um, Shannon is saying I think I have misunderstood something if I apply to university in Finland and I will start I will start uh, want to start school in fall 2021 that is this current application period that is starting December 1st yes or no great question and I think that I understand the um, uh, The, the 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 confusion here so there are two different type of application systems that you can use when you apply to finland and and again shannon i will up i have a video coming up about this very topic on next tuesday and that explains everything that you need to know in detail however in summary there are two different application systems that we use in finland in general uh, we have something called the joint application and then we have something called a separate application Uh, these are all used for the same purpose, but 
it, it, they they are used at different times and different for different universities. <laughs> so joint application means that you can apply up to six different degree programs. So not six different universities necessarily, but six different degree programs uh, in with one application form. These six programs can be from the same university or from multiple different universities. Um, there are three different joint application periods per year, two of which offer degrees in English. One in the fall, so that is in um, uh, that application period is in September, and then one is in the spring, which happens in January. So these are the joint application periods. <laughs> but then what we have is that we have a second application system called separate applications. Separate application basically means that you use a separate physical separate application form that you fill in, fill out for each university. And with the single uh, applic uh, separate application, you, you can apply to one or multiple programs under one university, but you can usually only apply for programs in one university with the same application because the application separate applications are university specific. However, you can fill out as many separate applications as you want. So multiple university separate applications. <laughs> and the thing is that uh, if you want to start school in fall 2021, there's two options here. One is to use the separate applications which happen this December or December to January usually. Uh, and this is where people confuse, uh, get really confused. So the, the applications that start December 1st are separate applications. And these separate applications are mostly used for master's degree programs for multi many universities. For example, Aalto University master's programs are mostly applied to with a separate application, which happens in December. However, if you do a bachelor's degree, those are mostly applied to with a joint application. And if you want to start school in fall 2021 we, uh, and you want to apply to a bachelor's, then your application period is in January. So I know that this is super confusing, but basically um, if you want to start school in fall 2021, then you need to apply either uh, in December for master's or in January for bachelor's. However, what is the best way to, to think about this is simply, that, is simply that each program in Finland, regardless of the school, is going to, is going to uh, uh, have a, a, a different application period compared to others. So what I recommend you to do is to first make a list of programs that you want to... Uh, I'm sorry, first make a list of universities that you're interested in then from those universities check out those degree programs that you are interested in so basically take this into in steps universities first then degree programs and when you have the degree programs listed out go through each of the programs and their application schedules and degree uh, requirements and only after that will you know when to apply and with which application the joint or the separate application all right so I think that this is the best way to think about this. I know that it's super confusing, but I, I hope that this helps you a bit. So, however, if you think if we think about your question very literally as a yes or no question, then the answer is yes. If you want to start school in 2021 and you want to do a master's, then you need to apply in December 2020. Correct. All right, guys, um, I think that I will take a couple more questions. There's a bunch of them in the chat, in the form. I will go through a couple of them and I, then I will end the stream for today because I need to get some sleep. Uh, however, um, the next one comes from Aishwarya Kumar from India. And uh, the question is, so for industrial engineering and management regarding the previous degree eligibility criteria, they've mentioned any field of engineering and at least 25 credits of management courses. However, during my bachelor's in civil engineering, there were no management course options. So in that case, will my application go null and void and hence rejected because there were no info regarding this 25 credits? Um, re really good question. And um, uh, I don't want to give you a direct answer here because the, 
the, the, the way that the university might interpret what is considered as a management course depends on the school. So what I recommend is that you contact the university, uh, Alta University directly. So the Alta University. So if you're still uh, live, uh, please send an email to admissions, plural, admissions at uh, alto.fi and ask them about this. Uh, and they will be, be able to provide you with a definite answer to this. My gut feeling is that unfortunately it might be so that it, you might not be eligible to apply because you need have need to have those courses. However, you have to take into account that you could, for example, apply for another program as well. So don't don't skip the idea of applying to study in Finland just because you might not be able to apply for industrial engineering and management by the way, which is a very difficult program to get in because it's super, super high in, in high, uh, high in demand. It's a very good pro um, it's a super good program. Um, but if the, if the application criteria simply don't allow you to apply, then look for another program because remember you can always minor in management. You can minor in business, business studies, even if you do a, a master's in, in another, in another engineering program. And then you might also be able to get li like some selective courses from man the, the School of Business. So there are multiple different opportunities for here you, for you here, not just the, the industrial engineering and management program. Next question comes from uh, Ricardo. Ricardo from Brazil. Awesome to have you here as well. Uh, Ricardo has not yet decided whether or not he wants to study in Finland, but he, the field of uh, which field he's uh, interested in, he has ap applied. Hmm. <laughs> And uh, the question is, you are one sexy... <laughs> Thank you, I guess. <laughs> that, um, I will take that, that as a compliment. Thanks. Alexi him, himself, thank you so much. Meme review for the two euro super chat. That is going to go directly into my espresso fund. I'm getting a bit tired, as you can see. That is going to come very handy tomorrow morning. Thank you. I'm actually about to end the stream in a, in a bit because I'm getting way too tired. However, I will go through a couple of more questions. Um, uh, next one comes from Simbot. And um, uh, before I go again, Alexi, I'm, I'm getting a bit dizzy, but thank you so much. I really appreciate it, bro, uh, for the support. And um, I, I will actually get back to you tomorrow about the thing that you that we discussed today or yesterday something like this and uh, uh, let's discuss it a bit more I, I've been I've been having a crazy day I, I've had a crazy day it's it's been a crazy day <laughs> anyways the question from Simbat who is from Kazakhstan uh, is hello how flexible is the Finnish system regarding the majors can I change my major or maybe declare it later like in American universities uh, very good question so in in terms of uh, when you apply to a university, no, you cannot uh, uh, declare it later. Later, you need to apply for a major or basically a program right away. However, you have to you have to understand that, <laughs> for example, if you if you apply to study like uh, industrial engineering, for example, that is a massive field. There's so many different specializations under industrial. Uh, I'm sorry, um, what did I even say? Industrial engineering let's say mechanical engineering i'm l losing my my thoughts if you if you apply to study mechanical engineering at a university that is a massive field that has multiple different specializations or majors under it however they're not considered as majors because your major is mechanical engineering technically however then under mechanical engineering there's sup a super wide range of different courses that you can take and you can structure your studies pretty freely so um, in in a sense, the the answer you, to your question is yes. You can change your major uh, by changing the structure of your studies. However, you cannot change your degree program. If you get what I'm meaning, so so there is a bit of a definition problem here because this is a bit different from the the U.S. system. Um, uh, but yeah. 
it's a bit, bit of a different case for Finnish nationals because we don't have to pay tuition fees, so we can basically change our majors a bit more flexibly. Again, depends on the program because, for example, some programs are require you to have a certain GPA to change to them, etc. So it's a bit different. Um, but yeah, so I would not consider this as a blunt question about can I change my major, rather, rather can I change the structure of my studies, to which the answer is yes. All right. Next one coming from a fellow YouTuber. Awesome. And um, and and uh, yeah, so the next question comes from a fellow YouTuber who is who is saying, Hi Oliver, I am Sorta, a f fellow YouTuber. Awesome. Awesome to have you here. Um, by the way, I would love to to get a link to your channel if that's something that you want me to to check out. Uh, if you don't want to put them in, put it into the chat, then, for example, consider joining the Discord server and uh, sending me a DM. Again, I will check it when I have time. I'm pretty uh, being bomb bombarded by messages, but if you want me to check your YouTube channel, just link it somewhere into my, to my socials. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if I want to take the leap of faith and do only YouTube or enroll at a Finnish university to get a degree and have a safer and more stable future. I was wondering how hard is it to handle a full-time bachelor studies at Aalto and a full-time job as a YouTuber at the same time? Great question. Especially since I would l also l have to register a business in Finland <laughs> and ha handle all the paperwork for taxes, etc. How daunting and time-consuming is it on top of studies? Also, have I have no idea how much of my revenue would end up in taxation here or there. Could I find an accountant legal uh, uh, slash legal advisor or general gu guidance through some sort of startup association on Aldo? And I suppose you are a, you, me, are a registered entrepreneur, so you can probably know what percentage goes to business taxes and other fees. That would determine whether or not I can afford to study there. Um, that's a really good question. Actually, um, what I recommend you do you to do is is this is a way too complicated topic to to discuss here. Uh, what I would like you to do is to contact me on LinkedIn. So I have my link uh, the link to my LinkedIn profile in the description box below. Uh, reached out to me there, sent me a connection request and a short message that you were in the live stream that you were the sorta sorta fellow YouTuber or full time YouTuber, and uh, you you would like to discuss this topic and let's discuss. We can for example arrange a a remote coffee session and we can talk about this because it's a complica complicated topic and I'd love to give you my perspective on it. So reach out to me on, on LinkedIn and I will um, I will get back to you. The next one comes from Matt from the US. Welcome Matt to the stream. Awesome to have you here as well. Um, Matt saying that I'm still in high school and uh, would he would be interested in either University of Helsinki or Aalto University uh, and the field of computer sciences. Awesome. And uh, the question is, is the tech field in Finland still new and growing? Uh, no, the tech field in Finland is still new. It's not new, it's pretty established already, but it's growing like hell. It's growing faster than, than the universities in Finland can prepare them themselves to. So basically, what, what there's a problem with Finnish universities that they're not able to meet the demand of um, educated people in, in the tech sector. So this is one of the reasons why the salaries for IT experts and software developers have been skyrocketing the couple of last years because there's way too many there's way too de there's more demand than there's um supply currently in terms of um in, in terms of talented uh workers so um absolutely yeah so if 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 computer sciences is something that you will, would like to pursue i would absolutely recommend uh, doing it because it's going to you're going to have a lot of really lucrative opportunities here um, fin Finland is is we have a startup boom currently there's a huge amount of different tech t startups here in addition a huge amount of really big more established companies are incorporating more and more and more technology especially for example in the banking sector uh, uh, Finland is a, is a country of networking and so Nokia for example is from Finland and um, we're Nokia is one of the leading uh, companies researching 5G and they're looking for more and more talent all the time internationally. So depending on your specialization, you're going to have a pre really bright future here if you do a degree in uh, computer sciences. So highly, highly recommended. Uh, next one comes from Jet Koti. 
And the question is, do you have to put the programs in order to preference in joint application for September 2021? Uh, let me double check super quickly. It's a sim simple yes or no quick question, but let me just check. Um, no. So if you apply in the in the spring uh, uh, joint application, so basically in January, then you do not need to put the then you don't have to put the degree programs in order of preference. Um, here is the link to the mm, here's the uh, website to the uh, joint application information. So check that out there. So, but yeah, the answer is no. You do not need to put them in an order of preference if you apply in the spring. So January. The next question comes from Ofet Ofense Ofense Lezego of Ofense Lezego. I hope that I got that at least at, at least somewhat correct. Who comes from Botswana? Awesome. That is really cool. Uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, and uh, Ofense Ofense is applying in the next application period uh, from the University of Botswana to Aalto University uh, to study environmental sciences. Awesome. Yes. Please. 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 Please come to Finland. Finland to study env environmental sciences, you are going to have a lot of really uh, good uh, job opportunities here. We are, Finland is one of the biggest countries in, in different environmental sciences uh, fields and in, in especially in research. And uh, if you do well in school and, and uh, uh, really, really uh, spend a lot of time networking during your studies, you're going to have a really bright future here. Uh, and the question is, do applications into masters in all to require SATs and an apl application fee? Uh, there is no application fees for studies in Finland, university studies, study studies in Finland across the board. No uh, application uh, fees when you ap apply using the studyinfo.fi service. There are a couple of other third party services where that have application fees, but that's a whole other question. When you apply through the normal path uh, to study in Finland, there's no application fee. And uh, Aalto University, I think, does not require a, the SATs for masters. Uh, Aalto, super fast. Mental. Mm. I I don't remember exactly. Depends on the program, but I, I my uh, general, if I remember correctly, it, it, they do not. You have to check the specific requirements for the program that you're interested in. Mm. Evgenia saying, what is the overall level of education among fin Finns? Do Finnish schools provide a good level of basic education? Fin the Finnish basic education is ranked number one in the entire world. So uh, the answer there is yes. <laughs> so um, let's see. So just a second, I will pull this out. Mm. <laughs> yeah, World Economic Forum ranks the primary education in in uh, of Finland the best in the world. So yes, we have a very high education here for uh, for ch for children. So very 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 high level of education. We are basically best in the world, uh, not only in terms of the uh, quality of education, but also in the quality of uh, life for ch children because we, they don't kids here don't have to sit in the library 24 7 busting their ass uh, to to do well in standardized tests we basically don't have standardized tests in finland uh, before the end of high school and uh, um, uh, school days in finland for kids are pretty short compared to many other countries and we have very long holidays here so kids in finland get very a lot of free time they get free, uh, a lot of freedom and again, there uh, in Finland, there's no emphasis on doing well in standardized tests. Rather, uh, school uh, kids in schools are treated as individuals, and uh, the idea is to emphasize e each and everyone's um, um, uh, ambitions as well as uh, uh, basically th strengths in school. So if you are good in arts then you will be you you're able to actually do arts and, and focus on that as well if you're ex excellent in math then you are going to be encouraged to do math but there's uh it's 
Finnish education system is, is especially primary school is 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 in the top of the world um and then the next question about i heard finnish children read a read a lot uh yeah uh in terms of the 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 rest of the world yeah we do read a lot and finnish kids do read a lot however in the latest pisa tests finnish uh, students actually ranked quite a bit lower in reading uh than in the years before and now it's being investigated for uh, the reasons for why this actually is and uh the the finnish government is going to address the, the problems so that we don't rank in the uh, drop in the rankings anymore in future pisa tests um yeah yevgeny also saying that we still have an awesome number of libraries yeah we we finns love libraries Uh, they're not uh, the funny thing that libraries in Finland are not only libraries, especially nowadays. They're like modern service centers. So, for example, there's uh, libraries offer 3D printing op- opportunities. You can uh, rent audiobooks, uh, e-learning materials. <laughs> there's many libraries offer soundproofed rooms for music or arts. So they're more like uh, these service cent- uh, service and learning centers rather than just places for dusty books so yeah we we really love libraries even though things are going digital all right two more questions and then i will end the stream uh one comes from scarlet from bolivia and uh awesome to have you here as well and the question is i've tried to use some language exchange apps to chat with people in northern countries and especially in finland As uh, Finland is a country I'm very interested in to uh, to study in, I wanted to have a look into the culture, how the languages are, or just have a, a bit of general knowledge of the country. But I've encountered men that are mostly just flirting, right? Women are always kind and interest uh, interested in talk to in talking, but men mostly just message to flirt and to send double meaning messages. Is it so normal there? I thought Finns were kind and shy. Also, do you have any suggestions on language exchange apps? that I could use. Yeah, um, I, I, I would not say that this is a problem at all generally w- with men. It's a problem with the internet. So any kind of an app that you get, there's always going bound to be problems there. So I would not recommend any kind of like language exchange apps. Rather, I would actually recommend you to get a teacher from, mm, let's see, what was it? Um, just a second, I need to pull this pull out this um mm, let's see mm, 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 mm. let's see let's see Yeah, so I would recommend that you check out iTalki. <laughs> Here, all right. Um, actually, yeah, Alexi, um, would you like to recommend a couple of language um, learning platforms and, for example, speak a bit about your future course? Uh, but yeah, I I really recommend iTalki. So basically, you're basically you're able to get a teacher. That is going to give you contact teaching lessons, uh, of course, remotely. Uh, and all the teachers there are, I think, vetted somehow. And so they're going to be really good. Uh, plus, you can actually check out reviews. So you're not going to have any kind of any of these kind of problems there as as well. Mm. Alexi, also, again, if you want to mention the 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 course, and um, uh, I would really recommend that you check out Alexi's language course. Uh, it's really, really good. Uh, especially for f- spoken Finnish, which is really important because spoken and book Finnish in Finland are completely separate things. And um, but yeah, I, I I would say that that's that is a problem with the internet, not necessarily with Finnish men. Um, yeah, Begani are saying that it seems to me that Finnish people have uh, has a little bit different attitude towards intimacy and all these kind of topics, much less taboos. Yeah, that's actually very true. In Finland, intimacy and um, uh, uh, everything that comes with it is much more relaxed in a sense than, for example, let's say in the U.S. For example, and and one of the things is that, for example, Finns go to sauna together. Um, sauna is not a sexual thing at all 
so for example if you're a bit hesitant on going to sauna uh, if people are naked there that is sauna is has nothing to do with sexuality it is is it's but but the thing that we're comfortable at being na naked around other people is something that is very weird to for uh, for example a lot of people in the u.s that's a cultural difference um that uh it, it takes a while to get used to however i i think that this is a uh, uh, actually a really good point. All right, uh, next question comes from Rish, uh, Rish from India. And um, the question is, hi, Oliver, I'm new to your channel. Awesome to have you here. Um, make sure to subscribe and actually turn on the notifications because especially if you're interested in applying to Finnish schools, I have a bunch of really, really important content coming up in the next coming weeks. And I recommend that you put on all notifications just to make sure that you actually see the videos when they come online. Uh, anyways, I'm highly interested in uh, doing my master's in Finland. There are many reasons for me to choose Finland as my study destination. There are. Yeah, that's true. The foremost of all is that I liked and admire Finland a lot. That's cool. My question is that I want to do a master's in data science, but I've done my bachelor's uh, in technology in civil engineering. Ah, so will it be a problem to get admitted into that program? That's a really good question. Um, that's a that's a really good question, and with some universities, it actually might be because you, your bachelor needs to be needs needs to make you el eligible to apply for a specific master's. So some some uh, master's programs require you to have a prior degree in the same field. However, some might only require that you need to have a certain amount of courses in that field for you to make to be el eligible, and uh, some ma master's programs might require you to have a minor degree minor studies in in that field all depends on the university itself what i would recommend you to do is to check out alta university masters in um data science and check that the the the, 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 the the requirements from there first so what i recommend you to do is to join our discord discord server uh, i have the link in the description box below and uh, send the same question into the questions and answers channel and i will then uh, then I will not forget the question and then I will look up the require a uh, specific website for you and you can then check the requirements from there. So I think that this would be a good way for you to start. But uh, yeah, definitely um, uh, it might m might be a bit of a problem, but I don't think it's going to be a, a barrier for you to apply. We just need to figure out what is the best program for you to apply to. I'm sure there is plenty of options. Uh, beside this, I have ple a plethora of questions to ask, but I'll just hit you up some other day. Yeah, just join our Discord server and start asking questions there. Uh, not only, of course, I will be answering the questions there, but there's a, al already a community of people there, almost 200 people in the server, who are already kind of answering each other's questions. So uh, that is really cool. So join the server through the Discord um, description box below. All right. Uh, next one comes from Offense. Ofe Offense. Offense, offense, let's go. Le Christ. Offense, let's go. There. Calm. Uh, and the comment slash question is thanks for the response and kudos for pronouncing the name right. Yes, got it. So that was. Um, so that was offense, let's go. Let's go. Offense, let's go. Cool. Where is the beeping coming from? Ah, shut up there. Um, you're welcome. I'm glad that I got it right. Uh, and then question is, please explain more about getting scholarships to study for masters in Alta. Do I first get admitted and then apply for a scholarship afterwards? Great question. And the answer is no. Uh, you apply for a scholarship uh, in any Finnish university through the uh, with the same application form that you use to apply for that university. <laughs> uh, so basically, the application form. Uh, should have like just checkbox checking that okay I want to apply for a scholarship. the The application forms might be a bit different depending on the, on the university and uh, depending on the scholarships that they have. So some scholarships you do not apply to uh, when you apply to school, but rather you apply only after uh, you've done your first year. However, for example, for all the university for masters, there's a checkbox in the application form that you need to check when you apply and you're not able to apply for a scholarship afterwards. So you, so you, you have to make sure that you check that box. Uh, once uh, 
I once the uh, the application forms open up, I will super quickly make a step by step t tutorial on how to do this or fill out this uh, application form. Uh, so on the first of first week of December. So uh, make sure to be subscribed and have the notifications on because I have a bunch of really important step by step guide guides coming up in the upcoming weeks and two months when the application period is open. Um, but yeah, so that's basically the way. Um, Aalto University also has two different scholarship programs. One is a scholarship that you apply when you ap uh, apply to the school. They have two options, 100% scholarship um, or tuition fee waiver and, and a 50% tuition fee waiver. This basically means that it only covers 100% or 50% of your tuition fee, but they do not cover any of your living costs. Then there's a second scholarship option that basically means that um, if you do an X amount of credits per year with a good grade, you will be able to apply for a 1500 euro scholarship that is then basically paid back to you afterwards. So you basically get a discount for your, for your tuition fee. However, if you want to check out more information about scholarships, uh, I have a dedicated video on the channel where I go through most of the details that you need to know about scholarships in general. I linked that into the uh, live chat, so check that out after the stream. Anyways, guys, um, I think I will start ending the ch stream. Uh, it would be awesome if we could get into 45 likes. We're currently in 41. So if, if we would be able to get four more likes to the video, that would be awesome. I would really appreciate it. Uh, once again, if you... Uh, if you appreciate, uh, if you get value of what I'm doing here on the channel, um, and you would like to contribute directly to what I do uh, and help me uh, actually do more consistent content for you guys also in the future, consider joining uh, as a channel member by clicking the join button all, uh, either here on the channel page or under the video. And when you click join, you can see the different membership levels that I have for the channel. Each of these membership levels uh, will get you access to different perks. Uh, for example, uh, if you're a master's or grad student, you will get access to a, uh, to a members only Discord channel where I give more attention to you specifically, especially when the server starts growing uh, and I, I have less time to answer people's questions. I will still be very active in that channel. Uh, so there's a lot of perks in the in being a member. In addition, of course, if you're a member, I will see your name highlighted in these live streams. Whoops, excuse me. I will see your name highlighted in these live streams and I will be able to address your comments and questions more frequently than um, uh, do, uh, those of uh, other subscribers. So if you would uh, like to consider becoming a member, I would really, really appreciate it. You guys are basically the only reason why I'm able to work as a YouTuber full-time and uh, it means the world to me. Anyways, um, thank you so much for, for joining us for the to this long three and a half hour live stream. Again, uh, if you are not yet subs uh, subscribed, subscribe, click the like and uh, turn on all notifications. And finally, if you want to get yourself a beautiful wooden watch made out of Finnish wood, get in focus or a le or a bunch of different le leather accessories for example wallets check out arni arni is a finnish brand designing and manufacturing watches and uh, watches wooden sunglasses and leather wallets and i have a 10 percent discount code in the description box below if you want to use it you will get a discount i will get a small cut and uh, that will help the channel grow in the future all right, thank you for so much for uh, for all the really good questions, guys. I will see you next Thursday with the next live stream. And uh, starting from next week, I will have two videos coming up on the channel uh, each week, especially now that we are coming close to the um, uh, application period. I will start activating the channel even more. And um, 